Israel's Channel 10 quoted a boss as saying, We will never recognize the Jewishness of the state of Israel, an apparent reference to Israel's proposed nationality law. During the meeting, Arab League foreign ministers agreed to present a draft resolution to the United Nations Security Council, setting a time frame for the creation of a Palestinian state, but did not indicate when the resolution would be presented. Abbas told the gathering that Palestinians were unable to continue waiting while Israel creates facts on the ground through the continued building of settlements. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. College roommates continue their bonding process until real friends are made, and a teacher hopes they never Google him. It's time for the weekly video feature that's heartier and more comforting than a heaping bowl of mom's butternut squash soup. This is the Onion Week in Review. Longtime James F. Blaine Elementary School teacher Suzanne Pomponio told reporters today that she could not believe how much fatter her second graders are getting. Pomponio estimates that each and every one of her kids must be 8 to 10 pounds heavier than anyone in her 2011 class, adding, quote, and those kids were pretty fat, too. Honestly, I didn't think it was possible that this year's kids could be fatter than last year's, but they are. I mean, short kids are fat, tall kids are fat, and there's a smell. I don't really know how to describe it. Local dad Michael Corain navigated several discount travel websites today with a precision reminiscent of 18th century Viennese prodigy Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart composing a symphony. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control of the airwaves by dialing in toll-free this live Sunday edition. Plenty of time for you to bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, teased earlier this week the latest on the ever-under-attack Uber, one of the ride-sharing companies, Uber and Lyft, I guess to a lesser extent, but Uber... Uh, is in the news again, this time out in Nevada. We'll tell you more about what has happened to them. 20 things that successful people refuse to do. Uh, those things we can talk about here tonight. The toll-free number is 855-453. We've got Skype as well. The Skype username is lrn.fm. But uh, this Sunday edition of the show, we have a special guest uh, third host in the studio this evening. And longtime listeners of the show will certainly recognize his voice. Dale Everett's with us tonight. Hey, Dale. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. May, uh, many of you may recall Dale was the host of uh, Free Talk Live. Uh, I don't remember which night it was, but one night a week you were here regularly. It changed a little. Yeah, and uh, and then you at some point launched your own show, which was originally uh, Prometheus Unchained, changed the name later to Flaming Freedom, probably the preeminent uh, liberty-oriented GL L LGBTQ, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, yes. uh, <laughs> podcast and uh, radio show, and that went on for how many years? Uh, about three years, Seems over like two hundred, over two hundred fifty episodes. I think that's four years. It's Fifty. Well, if you did we one a did week. two a week for a while. Oh, two. And a that's week. why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah, it may come back if Lauren decides to. So oh, we'll that's, see. That's a nice tease. I hope it does because I really enjoyed the show, especially when it moved to Sunday mornings for a very short uh, stint. I always thought that Flaming Freedom was a, a fun show to have on while people were driving to church. Right. <laughs> um, so, anyway, welcome back to Free Talk Live. You came all the way out here from Manchester, which is an hour and a half long drive, uh, to rake me over the coals, <laughs> right. as I understand it. I'm going to do so tactfully, though. Okay. If there's a tactful way to rake someone over the coals. All right. Well, yeah. that's fine. I you can don't have to use it. tact with Ian. <laughs> we'll see, I guess. So, um, I mean, what was motivating to you, uh, Dale, I mean, to, to come out here? We've talked about the Colbert Report on this program, and that certainly made made for quite a bit of controversy across the libertarian movement Yes. Uh, within the last couple of weeks. Um, do you want to, Mark, summarize what the Colbert Report incident was? Yeah, so um, the Colbert Report, which is a television comedy television show that sort of looks uh, newsy, commentary, um, and I like how you drop the R on the report. Report, <laughs> yeah, I, isn't that how you're oh, supposed that, to drop say the it? T? I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that's how he he you know Colbert is he spelled does with a say T it that way, <laughs> and Report is spelled with a T, so report. So it's just kind of funny. Um, I think it's clever comedy, and I think it is often quite uh, insightful, and prescient, and. Um, uh, timely and, and humorous, but they did a report on the Free Keen Squad, they called it, which is basically <laughs> Robin Hooding here in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. where uh, in Keene, New Hampshire specifically, where people run around and they put 
quarters or excuse me dimes and nickels into meters and feed meters before the meter maids are able to uh which to i've done by the way yeah a little bit not very much a it, little before the meter maids are able to write a ticket so i thought that the report was just dishonest as it could as the day is long um and i felt set upon when i watched it i i, I felt like a victim when i watched it and i <laughs> really um, oh, poor Piper. and i gotta say that i think oh. that whoever um, you know was in it including yourself was a fool for <laughs> uh, you know giving them the ammunition most of the ammunition was in- including Cantwell and that whole thing, but uh, and you know, because I think it seems like that's when it started to go downhill. You think so? I'm just going to be completely honest. Yeah, I mean what, the the report. I, I, I ha- no no actually I, I was expressing opinions about some of the Robin Hooding activities, specifically where they're like chasing down uh, the the meter maid mm-hmm. and shouting things at him or her, and uh, which I believe was a Cantwell video. Uh, well, that pro- I heard that's what started it, mm-hmm. and I saw some of those videos, and I had people tell me that most of the videos are not like that. But of course, if you have enemies who don't like you, those are going to pick out posted. the most emotionally charged mm-hmm. or whatever the things that are going to get people's hackles up the most. So I'm not surprised that Colbert would latch onto those particular videos where that's happening, right? Well, I mean, but I've expressed well, opinions about that before Colbert. But it's even just, if Cantwell weren't involved, they still would have made as much you know fun of us as they possibly could. They probably would have put me on there, you know. Instead, I'm not of sure more. you. Well, you maybe you wouldn't even be on there at all if there if there hadn't been the chasing down of the meter maid and and shouting at them. I mean, I think I think the response to Robin Hooding up until those particular sorts of things was was fairly positive. Yeah, I, there was so they took maybe what they're able to find three or four seconds worth of uh, good video of people, you know. Uh, talking loudly to the meter maids and attempting to get in mm. front of them and put meter- trying to be confrontational, trying to have a confrontation. And- well, there's no doubt. Um, you know, the libertarians in the past uh, certainly have conf- uh, you know been confrontational with their their ideas, and I don't think that the Robin Hooders are really any different um, different than that in many cases. So, well, yeah. yeah, like I said, I used to be one, and I'm a big fan of the idea of it. Yeah, I just there was a point when, and it, 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 I don't even know if I should say it's a point. There are just there's a few instances that are the, are the ones people latch on to. If someone doesn't like you, and and maybe for good reason, if sure. that's if they think you're being if douchey, they think you spend all day <laughs> doing people. that, right? That's yeah. that's how well, it's presented. It, it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh, how often you're doing it, right? When you do it, you demonstrate yourself to be kind of douchey how do you avoid and, and what is it accomplishing is what my, is what i want to know like there are people i don't like and i can understand why uh, government employees can be amongst that crowd certainly uh, some more than others because we're 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 libertarians we're not big fans of of government and big government in particular and intrusive government and so forth so there are people i don't like like for instance i am not a fan of prisons and there are people in prison who are actual criminals. I don't want to. I want to disregard the ones that shouldn't be there at all because they didn't aggress against anyone. We know what I'm talking about. But if you just consider the ones that actually are criminals that hurt someone or stole or or killed or raped, I still don't think prisons are a, are a solution. I don't feel like just arbitrarily making them suffer accomplishes anything. So if if well, you I if I put a parking meter maid in the same realm as a criminal of any other type of criminal, because I have said the government is just a certain kind of crime, then and then just make them suffer, what does that accomplish? Oh, I'll tell you what it accomplishes. Um, the So one of the meter maids quit, right? Yeah, um, one of three. One of three quit. Uh, I'm I'm of the opinion. I have a he different, has not been replaced, and he's I now a libertarian, right? I have no. a different opinion on what the the most Robin Hooders. I'm not a Robin Hooder. Um, have on this is I think that the parking enforcement isn't going to change in Keene, but that it is overstaffed. That you get the same because really the value of a parking enforcer, a, a meter maid, is that they scare people away from uh, you know parking in certain places for certain m- amounts of time. You get the same amount of scare value out of one employee as you do out of two employees. So why do you have two employees if it's already running in the red, they're already writing tickets next to um, to cars that are sitting next to empty spaces. They're they're not they're they're a mess. And I imagine that most parking enforcement around the country is in a similar situation where, because it's the government, they can't run it efficiently and they can't make money doing it. So why are they doing it? Well, to keep pe- to dissuade people from sitting all. Day, you know, parking all day in a parking space and using up sure. a valuable parking space. I get that, but you get the same value out of one meter made as you do out of two. If you and can maybe get one of a better a better value out of 
creating more parking. If, <laughs> right. If, if you can get rid of one of the beater maids here in, in Keene, New Hampshire through annoying them, then have you created a net positive? Well, first of all, that's, to me, not the goal of Robin Hooding. Nope. Uh, the goal but, of- Can you answer the question, though? One more time, the question? The question is, if you get rid of one of the meter maids through sort of being mean to them, um, have you created a net positive? Because I think this is the same reason- That's a that- very simplistic question, because what have you? what are you giving up? Like what? What? What is the PR damage? Yep. For being uh, a holes to the parking meter maids, uh, in order to get that goal, yep. right? And this is what I'm trying. This is one of the things I want to get at is when we're talking about activism, it's a very, it's something that has a very subjective measure in yep. trying to determine whether it's effective or not. Especially and and doing cost benefit analysis for activism, right? You if s- you're doing something that you might go to jail for years and years. I hope you got something out of that. I don't believe <laughs> you know that, your, your, the risk yep. assessment, the cost and benefit analysis. Let's focus on Mark's question for a moment because I want to talk about all those things. But, uh, but Mark, you know, with the question of the guy who quit, he was featured in the Colbert Report. His yep. name's Alan. And uh, it's worth noting that the, the ladies who are the parking enforcers did not quit. Uh, they're still on board. So why did he quit and they didn't quit? I don't think that it was because one of the Robin Hooders called him a baby killer or whatever the allegation is. There's some allegation about someone someone at some point saying to him that he was a bad guy because he was in the military. I highly doubt that it was a few comments that led him to leave that job. We'll come back with more here in moments. 855 453. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is October 29th, 2014. Gold opened at 1223.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1268.34, 634.17 for a half ounce, or 317.09 for a quarter ounce. That's 1268.34, 634.17, and 317.09. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase, and there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. We're here on the live Sunday edition of the program. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That is the number brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got Ian here. And Dale. And Mark. You can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee. I'm enjoying some right now. It's Buzzbox Coffee. Just go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's a uh, subscription program. Now, you'll get your first pound free. You pay the shipping, you'll get a free pound. But since it's a subscription program, you'll continue to get coffee if you don't uh, you know, cancel your subscription. You could do it at any time. You can get your free pound and go. It's no problem. Here's why I believe you should continue to get the coffee after you get the free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. Because it's fantastic coffee. It's uh, shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% great Arabica beans. You will not taste better coffee. But also what BuzzBox does is they give us some of the profits back so that we can give micro loans to people around the world through Kiva.org. And we've given out many micro loans and we've had lots of success with it. It's really great. Once you're able to give the hand up, not a handout, mind you, the hand up to people uh, who need help around the world, they pay the money back and then you can do it again. That's what I love about micro loans. Um, it's, so please, if you want to participate with us, making the world a better place, Get your coffee that you drink already. You probably drink coffee already. Upgrade your coffee drinking experience through coffee.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the Colbert Report that happened now, what, like two and a half weeks ago. It's been a little while. Uh, but, Dale, you wanted to come on the show tonight specifically to address some concerns that uh, that you've had with um, how that, re you know, why why we even bothered doing that in the first place, I guess. Uh, you called this a... Uh, Not really. I, no. Well, I mean... You be perfectly clear I, that's like the uh, a recent thing it certainly got it got a lot of attention and stuff mm -hmm. but it's it's really the, the things that they that happened on that show are just things that i've been just talking about for some time now okay. again I, i'm a former robin hooder myself yeah uh, i never chased down parking meter maids and yelled at them so or, um most people that robin hood don't did chase you, down meter did you maids. walk in front of the meter i the worst thing i've done that i can recall it's and I, I still don't regret it is kind of get ahead of her and and put something in the meter right before she was about to get to it and write a ticket that's and how i just feel bad about that at all. Do it. That's yeah it. i didn't mind that at all i okay. tried to get ahead of her and beat her to the to, to the meters you know when i could it, it wasn't always possible yeah, and, sure. Uh, I don't feel bad about that. I didn't hassle her at all. I didn't shout things at her as if she's an evil person because she's a government employee. And, and you know, there's a number of things that— Who has done that? Uh, uh, well, there's video of it happening. There's video of it, it happening. Huh? Who did it? I uh, I saw a couple of videos. I saw uh, the, I saw the Chris Cantwell one. Chris Cantwell. Yeah. Yeah. And, Did Graham caught on video doing that? And I said, like, I think I said it right at the beginning of the show. I said, uh, and, and I've said to you before, particularly when we start talking about this online, that I mostly like what Robin Hood does. Mm. And, and d you, you know, it's mostly pretty good. It's just the whole shouting down uh, meter maids. And uh, I, heard there's, I heard there's I heard some others too, but I haven't watched these videos in a little while. I didn't like make a point to watch them right before the show, which yeah. I probably should have. It's been a while since I saw them, so so Chris, I can't tell you. I can't. It seems like there was one other person too that did it. Chris Cantwell. Um, a when you watch the when you watch the Colbert Report video that came out a couple weeks ago, and yeah. I did just link to it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter, so anybody that hasn't seen it yet can can check this out. They did use a number of clips from the Chris Cantwell video. There's only one from my recollection. It's fairly lengthy. Yeah. And basically, it was when Chris Cantwell he lived in New uh, lived in New Hampshire for a short period of time, maybe four or five months, 
uh, back in 2012. Actually, was renting a room from you, I think, uh, Dale. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Um, so at that time, that's back before he was uh, quite as as what is the word notorious. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah. And so he made this video where he went out and basically. He, you know, kind of gave him what's for verbally. He verbally sort of harangued the the parking enforcers and essentially did a comedy routine uh, with them almost. Um, you know, when I watch that video, I'm not offended by what he did. And he didn't just go and shout at the parking enforcers. Maybe they took some clips in the Colbert Report that made it seem like he might have been doing that. But for the most part, he was just talking um, mm -hmm. mostly at them. He did use uh, foul, what would be considered foul language when he did it. But I would He's a crass comedian. That's I would what he point does. out yeah. that the parking, the, the meter maids were, off, were in more than one circumstance caught laughing at his antics. So they, to well, some extent, were that could be a defense amused. mechanism it when you're very be. uncomfortable. A lot of people will laugh because they don't want to look like you're really upsetting them. But uh, so he you know. used, you know, he used that scene as basically a comedy skit, essentially. Yes. And I when I was watching that, I was I was ready to grimace. I was ready to hear him say something that was really offensive or really awful, you know, because this is a guy who's made sort of in infamy. Uh, he's his infamy has been gained through pieces online that suggest sort of beat around the bush at uh, violence with the police. They, he kind of pats on the back uh, people who yeah. have used violence toward the police in some posts. So, you know, almost expected him to suggest that the parking enforcers should be shot or so. I, you know, but that didn't happen. That didn't come out of his mouth in those uh, encounters. <laughs> so it's okay. It's all and, right that he was just harassing a meter maid. <laughs> well, on, on I don't consider <laughs> harassing. I, that's the thing. This is one of the fundamental differences between my viewpoint and I think a lot of uh, liberty people is I don't consider Consider it harassing to tell a government employee what you think about what they do. So, if, well, what do you think it accomplishes? Well, it's entertaining. His video is very entertaining. I was I was quite entertained by it. So it, 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 it is. And here's that. the thing. And I said this off the air. I'm going to say it on the air now. Right? Mm -hmm. Is I don't even blame him. Right? He is a comedian, like you said. Yeah. This is entertainment for him. And for and there's a you know like I'm a big fan of the Amazing Atheist. Right, he says really outrageous, offensive things. The YouTube he guy? has a certain yes, yeah. right. Uh, he has a, a YouTube channel called The Amazing Atheist, and he says things that will be very upsetting to religious people, which is a significant portion of the population. Uh, but I like his stuff. It's it's it's. Does cathartic. he go out into public and say those no, things? No, not so much. It's not no. the same then, right? No, because Chris is in public and he's you know letting these uh, ladies have it. I've and seen people do similar things though, who are also, for instance, going out and saying things to religious people or whatever, and it is cathartic. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't believe in catharsis. <laughs> <laughs> but really? that's like Chris Campbell's the only one who's and, and, ever really done that. I don't really blame him for doing it either. But yeah. like I like for instance, from an activism point of view, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be associated with that. Mm. Like if I'm if I'm if I have an activism goal, I wouldn't want to. I would want to distance myself from that. And, and if someone's talking see, about killing cops, see, about the cops, if someone's talking about killing cops, even if they're, I mean, even if they're clearly putting disclaimers, I'm not going to go do it or anything. And you, you know, uh, I, I've read that article by the way. I haven't, it wasn't I haven't an read angry, it recently. I would, I would want to distance myself from that from an activism point of view as well. But what he was right? doing wasn't angry, you know, so much mm -hmm. as it was funny. That's my perspective. Other people will will probably see it differently. But I found it to be fairly amusing. There wasn't really any other instance. Maybe Graham Coulson, who was doing some Robin Hooding for a little that while, might have been the other he one might that I heard have about. said it's been a while. He tends to have kind of a big mouth, and yeah. so he might have said something that was would have been considered offensive. And then there was a video that I made a couple months ago where one of the parking enforcers was acting very erratically and crazy. And so I wanted to get that on video because I didn't know what she was going to do personally, and I wanted right. to document her craziness. And I made, you know, I uh, I laughed at her for acting in an erratic, crazy manner because, sorry, it's funny. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with laughing at these government agents as they use their aggression against I us. Think I think it it's important to laugh at them. I think it fact. depends. I mean, I think we like I've been I've been in Keene for quite. A, I spent some time in Keene, as you know, and I've seen. So, uh, some real abuse by like, government agents, by police, and things like that. And I believe in calling them out on it on camera, in person, live if possible. But there's 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 a there's judgment to be made about when that's called for or not. Sure, I mean some people don't see it as abuse when these parking enforcers threaten people regularly, and that's what I, I consider it. We're I coming don't. up here in moments. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. Plus, they steal people's cars. It's free talk live.
The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition of the show. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Those toll-free numbers are brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you need to go hook up with ProXPN. You get their software for free. Just go and download it at proxpn.com slash FTL. It will encrypt your data connection. Whatever you your internet service provider happens to be, maybe it's the one at your house, your office, your school, your coffee shop, Wherever it is that you're online, getting online, ProXPN will prevent your ISP, your 
provider from knowing what you're doing online. They encrypt your data connection, and you can go and get it for free for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices as well at proxpn.com slash FTL. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but it's not that hard to get working with Linux either. Uh, proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for just about 5 bucks a month, when you use our discount code FTL50, uh, you get 50% off the price of the annual account. That's what breaks the price down to around 5 bucks a month. What will you get for that? Well, in addition to the free service, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. So with a free account, you only get one server. With the, uh, the premium account, you get many of them. And you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50. Or if you've got Bitcoin, you can save even more. You'll save 62% by using code FTLBTC and then paying with Bitcoin. You get a great discount on privacy that is priceless at proxpn.com slash FTL. Let's go to Ryan. He's listening in Massachusetts. We're talking about activism here in the Keene area that has made headlines and uh, video reports like Colbert Report, Good Morning America, and so many more. It's too, too many to even count, um, but it's controversial, and people have opinions about it. Ryan, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, thanks, Ian. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I wanted to call in about this because I had an uh, issue with a traffic enforcer, and it kind of. And I wanted to talk about Robin Hooding before the whole Colbert thing because then I saw that, and man, I, I don't think you guys look very good on that. Uh, the free the Free State Project did not look good on that Colbert report. Well, the Free State Project was never mentioned. The Free State Project was never mentioned. I actually, State. yeah, I said that I that, that would have made it a disaster if they had. I guess it wasn't okay. So, but if, if you want, can I tell you the little story that I had? Where You're really welcome to do that. But I'd just like to comment quickly that when you go on the Colbert Report, you expect to not look good. And if you expect to look sure, good when you I'm go on the Colbert well. Report, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Uh, Randy Philly will look pretty good. Unless you're harassing people, unless you're harassing people, like we're never, Chris Camwell, quote, we're never going to let you get away with this. He's like, we're never going to let you live. He's following this guy with a camera. Actually, I think it might have been the woman at the time, but you know, they cut it so like he's, he's literally harassing someone. So he let's get technically let's not get harassment. Him. <laughs> yeah, harassment's a crime in New yeah. Hampshire that ha includes threats of bodily harm. It, it may not legally be harassment. I doubt. I doubt it's that. It's not in legally fact. hassle it or harangue. Okay. The reason why it's not it legally is. harassment is because you can't harass a government employee. You're supposed to be able to talk to government employees and tell them what you sure. think of what they're doing. Isn't so. it funny though? You're, you're you're basing your your notion of harassment on what the legal definition is instead of what a a sensible, like tactful and and polite person's notion of it is. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Can I can I continue my story? Like, go ahead. Real quick before. So, um, I do landscaping, right? So I'm doing the actual town commons. Okay, like it's like a little flower thing, and I'm doing it for the town. It's, it's like a quote unquote charity, maybe. Okay. So I'm parked like up the road, and I'm parked outside of a nail salon. And, like they, we have uh, a traffic enforcer. He's called Robocop. Like this, a couple of. Them. But I, this made me think twice about traffic enforcement. So I was parked there, and then, like, I got a ticket. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But then I go down there, and then, like, oh, well, we changed it 30 minutes. And what it was was there's 30-minute parking, in, like, in front of this nail salon, okay? And, like, this nail salon does not want someone to park there all day and go do shopping. They need their customers to go in there and park. For the, you know, 30, 40 minutes and leave. Why should so I pay they, for Why should I pay for a meter maid's uh, paycheck so that that nail salon gets the right parking service that it deserves from the city? That nail service should be uh, paying the city for that service, and it shouldn't be put upon the oh, taxpayer. They already are. Well, they already are. How I mean, so? in, the, in the view of the nail salon, they're paying their property taxes. I'm not claiming that they're not paying their property taxes. I'm paying my property taxes too, and I don't have any interest in that parking space in front of the nail finish salon. Finish his story. I'd like to hear the the whole story. So go ahead. Well, no, that's about it. So, like, it. I mean, okay. I go, and then, then I realized, uh, you know, oh, that means I understand now why they want to move cars out of that area. Like, so you can't park there all day. But wait a minute, because, just like, a point of clarification: little, the meters store, don't don't accomplish that, right? Like, so no meter there, no meters. Thirty. Then put a meter up. You know? <laughs> it was like a two-hour parking though. Mm -hmm. Like a two, like 
It used to be two hour, but then they had changed it. Then I really realized. So they why they, they got a target for a uh, ticket for parking there too long. I got a ticket for parking there too long. Okay. It was, but it was and like you feel like you minutes. deserved it. Is that right? Well, uh, no, but I understood the reasoning behind it. Well, I understand I the reasoning left. behind that, too. My son's six, and he, he was trying to lure the, uh, the cat into his room with a pumpkin, but it's a stupid idea. Um, uh, you know, like this, look, Wait, you know as well as I do <laughs> that— <laughs> Do you understand? It's a free market. The people have a business, right? There's it's not a free market in front of anything. Uh, they have a business with a parking in front of their shop. Yeah. It's 30-minute 30, 30 parking. Yeah. For a reason. That's yep. because they need people to be able to come and go. Now, hold on. Not, Just to clarify, you know, this is a government parking space, right? This isn't yes, the business's the parking road. space. Exactly. So is this a town-wide exactly. rule, the 30-minute thing? Is it town-wide, or oh, is no, it just, I mean, just that it, area? Certain places will have two-hour parking. Some places, places. have 30 minutes. Okay. This place had 30 minutes on a corner. There's a convenience store next door as well. So, like, of course, they don't want two-hour parking there. They want their customers... All the keen parking is uh, is two hour. Wait a second. Do you think this is really an important question? This is the most important question here. Do you think a free market, an actual free market in parking, would be more efficient than whatever it is the city's doing? I do. Wow. I don't know. In this case, like that's you think the city's. You think the government enforcement of anything? This is this is the case. Here we have it. This parking space in front of a a nail salon in in Massachusetts Uh, is the one case where the government is necessary. Let's say I don't know. (laughs) I know. You don't have to know. That's you know. Wait, wait. You don't have to know. Yeah. You don't have to know. That's really what it comes down to, the free market, is you don't need to know. What you need to know is the government is generally inefficient and generally does a poor job. So specifically, whether you think that they're going to be able to do it in this circumstance or not, is you don't know because you'll never get a chance to know because the government claims ownership over that spot. And that's the problem. I know. I don't. I don't want anyone getting their car. I wish everybody would be like, that's a nail salon. I'm not going to park my car there and spend my day shopping. Knowing that those people need their customers' precious money that they pay. For that I, can, I ask you, can I ask you something, caller? Just go yeah. right ahead and ask. Uh, are you? Uh, are you? Do you describe your? Do you self-describe as libertarian in viewpoint? Sure. sure. Okay. So you. you, yeah. you sure. So that's interesting to me. Is that you? And and it's a lot of people who self-describe as libertarian are upset by this activism. Certain t- parts of it, obviously. Like again, like I myself am upset by it. I'm a libertarian. I, yeah. I just self describe yeah. as an anarchist. Actually, uh, I don't believe yeah. that. Uh, I don't believe in centralized well, government as a good that, solution, would, yeah. as a better solution to a free market solution. Let's just put it that way. But I don't feel like that's yeah. what we're arguing about tonight, right? I feel like that's if that's kind of a a, a distraction from what we're really talking about, which is this effect. Is also, this effective think, activism for? Well, I don't want. Tre- I want people to treat each other with respect. I think we all do. And I understand now that, man, they had to use, like, I don't think they need to use the state to do that. But also, I think with that, with, you don't need to harass ticket takers either. It's I, not I think I get you anymore. I when think I understand stealing, your point of view when you say that you, you, you don't know how the free market would solve this problem. And so right now, this is how it's being addressed and probably a far from, a far from ideal way. But that, but a lot of people understand why it's happening, Thanks and they for, don't know the alternative right Thanks now, for the call, so. Ryan. Appreciate it. Is it harassment to say to a purse thief, stop thief? Don't do that. Put that purse down. You bastard. Is that harassment? Only if this purse thief has been able to steal purses for, for centuries without uh, with impunity. Then it's harassment, right? Yeah. 855, 450 free. You take control here. This is Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of 
kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving an in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With your very own freeze dryer, you'll be able to freeze dry the food your family loves. Because we live in uncertain, difficult times, what better way to show your love for your family than to buy them a gift that helps them preserve food they can use now or in 25 years? Go to HarvestRight.com and find out how you can get your in-home freeze dryer. Layaway is available. That's HarvestRight.com. Hi, I'm John Rainey, Chief Financial Officer of United Airlines, and I'm honored to be the National Chair for the 2015 March for Babies campaign for the March of Dimes. United is a proud supporter of the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more mothers have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Please join us in working together for stronger, healthier babies. Visit marchofdimes.org. It's The Onion Radio News. General Motors reports record sales of its new disposable car. This is Doyle Redland reporting. General Motors has announced a 56% increase in earnings this year, attributing much of it to February's wildly successful launch of the GMC Whim, the first-ever non-refillable disposable automobile. Debuting at a cost of $1,100 each, the vehicles are flying out of showrooms as quickly as dealers can stock them. Whim enthusiast Glenn Shriver. I recently consumed four vehicles driving from my home to Daytona Beach for the first annual Whim Owners Convention. I've already collected all eight colors. Rival automakers are preparing to counter with their own lines of disposable cars, including the Ford Temporaire and the Chrysler Dumper. The 2002 Mitsubishi Ditch will be unveiled later this year with a projected sticker price of $799. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday edition of the program. You can dial in toll-free here at 855 855- 450 free. That's the Pro XPN toll free line. 855 450 3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian here. And Dale. And Mark. Dale occasionally blogs over on anarchyinyourhead.com. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you have Very blogged recently. I did Someone? blog recently. Nice. And, and uh, if I, I, I offered if people want to read an article I wrote recently um, called Libertarians colon a little less douche. Right, and I think that was somewhat inspired by some what you consider to be douchebaggery going on here in Keene. Is that right? I think I wrote it before the Colbert Report came out. I, I think, think I updated yeah. it a little bit later, um, made some minor changes to it just to make it a little more readable and uh, try to be a little more succinct. So we're having a conversation generally about activism and you know how to approach things from a libertarian activist standpoint that will do the least damage. You know, PR is the Colbert Report a bad, uh, is it a PR disaster? Uh, That was what we said that you had suggested earlier. And some of the folks on Facebook have been responding to that. I might like to read some of those Facebook responses here in a little bit. But there was something you wanted to, I guess, respond to about the purse thief statement. 
statement that oh, I made? Oh, yeah. What well, you said is that harassment. I think is it, it harassment it to say is. stop thief yeah, yeah, to uh, someone but who steals it's, But I don't blame someone for saying that. I mean, you have an emotional yeah. reaction when someone does something like that to you. Mm-hmm. And, Should uh, you and, respect and, and, and Mark? Should uh, you respect the person? No. Uh, well, uh, no, I don't. But Mark said, for instance, well, unless they've been doing it, like, like obviously the state, I consider the state to mm-hmm. be organized crime. I'm yes. an, I've said before I'm an anarchist. So now the only question then is what do we do about that? And you said, well, they've been doing it for years and years. So Centuries. here's the thing. Mm-hmm. If you film yourself saying that to someone, uh, for, and for what purpose? I mean, if, if most people, we, we have to acknowledge, for instance, that the huge vast majority of the population mm-hmm. is not anarchist. No doubt, right? I'm not an anarchist. Right, and we I'm and a we, we we I think most of us will admit that a big part of our activism is about reaching hearts and minds. It's about educating people. Mm-hmm. That's what this show is if about. If it's going to be successful, it is. Yeah. Am I am I wrong to say that this show is largely about educating people about freedom? Let's and hope so. Better solutions than this than the centralized control mm-hmm. that government represents. So we're trying to reach hearts and minds. I mean, if you're going to say, well, I can harass this person because they're a statist. Well, then you're now you've now justified. No, nope, that's not to what I harass would say. Everyone, I wouldn't say that at uh, all. The 97 percent of the population that is that is not. No, anarchist. I would never advocate for people harassing status. I would say that if you are telling a government bureaucrat specifically what you think about what they do, that that's not harassment. How is it different? If they if, don't if, like if, it. What about any person out there in Keene who who would take that job if they were mm-hmm. unemployed and it was a good wage and they're willing to do it because they don't think there's anything wrong with that, which is that's, a huge chunk of the population of what Keene. You're calling How are they fundamentally different and no longer deserving of harassment? What you're calling harassment is me letting that person know that what they're doing is wrong. Well, then, then that's you could say that to anyone out there who has their moral support behind these. But that's these not the same. Mates. They're not the ones who are actually ticketing people. The average person, the person who's a, who is upset by Robin Hood or the, uh, by Robin Hooding, the, that is saving people from getting parking tickets. And I don't think anyone's Kingham. upset about Robin Hooding and people saving people from parking tickets. Um, some people are because they see it's a threat uh, to the yeah, system. That's the, I shouldn't say no to anyone. You're right. There the are pe- a few people. The, and they're kind of douchey. The too. people in the city of Keene <laughs> are upset about it. They're the right. ones who've been. They're Hiding behind uh, what they call harassment. No, no, not just that. They're accusing the Robin Hooders of threatening, intimidating, and harassing their employees. Well, here, here's my opinion on that. From a legal perspective, if you've got video of specific people actually engaging in legal harassment, that's one thing. It's they another don't. thing. Uh, exactly. And, and I think, as far as like a case against Robin Hooders, I would hope, and I don't expect them to be just about it, but I would hope that they would say, "Well, the, these are individuals, right? And they're not, they're they, they're trying to see Robin Hooders as a collective and mm-hmm. see maybe Chris Cantwell did something, and they're going to declare that to be harassment. Well, that doesn't say anything about the other Robin Hooders. But that's, that's getting into an argument about the legal case. I'm not talking about that. Like I said, why are we as anarchists using the legal definition of harassment instead, of the, common, instead of the common decency uh, word? Well, to me, To then. me, I'm uh, decent to the government bureaucrats. Generally, I am you know, kind and friendly toward them. But if they behave in a rude manner toward me, then I don't see anything wrong with calling them out for their criminality. There's I don't nothing either. wrong with that. I, I don't either. It's a subjective decision, and I right? Don't care what someone seen, thinks about it. I've seen police being really abusive. I've seen other bureaucrats being really abusive of their power, and I've been upset, and I've mm-hmm. called them out on it. And in many times, I've tried to call them out on camera, if at all possible, and things like that. Then you're no but different from a, me. Of course I am. It's a subjective measurement. I mean, there's a time for it. There's a time when it, 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 it comes down to, uh, it comes down to again, a subjective measure of when mm-hmm. is an, uh, when is something actually effective. Like, if, it depends uh, if I'm going to harass something, do. I hope the hell I'm going to accomplish something. It depends on it. what you're trying to do. Uh-huh. So, you were talking about uh, reaching hearts and minds. That's not necessarily what my videos are intended to do. So when I posted the video about um, where there was a parking enforcer who was acting in a very erratic manner, just to bring you you know, up to speed on that particular story. It happened okay. a few weeks ago. We were out doing some campaigning, actually, at Keene State College, and my job was to give people rides uh, who needed rides to the polls. So I was just hanging out on Main Street, and sure enough, one of the parking enforcers uh, shows up on her regular route of enforcing on Main Street to enforce out in front of the college. So, you know, I've always got my Robin Hooding stuff with me in my activist backpack. I went and grabbed my change and uh, grabbed my Robin Hooding cards and got right in front of that meter maid and started filling meters and did not record any video because, you know, I was just being friendly with her like, oh, hey, you know, good morning and just <laughs> filling the meters. That's normally how I approach things. But then when but we But you came, have a reputation, Ian. I mean, come on. I don't know why. I don't. The, 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 <laughs> the video. Hold on. The video okay. in question is the only video anybody's ever said to me was offensive about Robin Hooding that I've been in. 
So I don't know what reputation I have as far as the Robin Hooding goes. You're, whatever Freaky does, you're mm-hmm. going to have your reputation is going to be attached to that. To well, Freaky doesn't do anything. And, it's just a blog, you know, and it posts about what activists do. It's easy do. to say that, but meanwhile, th- th- lots of Robin Hooding videos are being posted there, and some of them yeah. show people being really douchey to the meter maids. Okay. And so you, there's a reputation attached to that, and it's like it's. This reminds me, if for libertarians instance, and I don't want to dif- about if this. libertarians don't want to discern individuals, that's not my fault. If people, if libertarians who should know better than to collectivize people want to go ahead and blame Ian Freeman for everything Chris Cantwell has done or Graham Colson or anybody else I, has done, that's not my problem. I'm not talking about the the libertarians, and again, liber- a lot of the libertarians out there understand that we have a PR battle. That we are trying to reach hearts and minds, and they do care about that, even if you don't. And so, oh, yeah, I do they care, care about that. that. So, so it, it's not just about it's not just about that. It's about uh, again trying to reach people who aren't libertarian yet. I'm not. Pro- I have no not, problem with that. And you know. I, I, it's not to say that I'm not trying to reach hearts and minds. But my primary goal is to reach people who already agree, so they'll come to New Hampshire. And I'm not concerned with what the people who love the state think about me. I'm not concerned with what their opinion is because I know those people are always going to disagree with the things that I do. They're going to find they're There's, going to find objections about Shire sharing. These this is the kind of people we're talking about. They have found things to critique about Shire sharing, which is a charity that feeds not, hundreds of families in Sure, New but again, there's you, there will be people who are going to be upset about any little thing. I'm not going to worry about those people so, either. So you know, you're not, not saying not about those them. people either. Okay, but, that's good. But to know. I think it's douchey the way people yeah. are talking to the meter maids in some of these mm-hmm. videos, and and I don't blame them for reacting the way they do. The 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 little old lady who was being uh, who had the stop sign and was uh, oh, yes, walking kids across the street, right? Mm. Um, Except and, she wasn't. And Derek and Derek comes up. And I like Derek too. This is another case where yeah. I like most of what he does. The, uh, you know, I have this is the my most criticisms about specific things. Yeah. And if I say a specific thing, all of a sudden I'm on the other side of the fence, right? I am no, I am now the enemy because you have to be a hundred percent on board. About, I want to talk or about you're hundred percent on the other side of the fence. I want to cr- talk about the crossing guard video. It's probably mm-hmm. the it's, that video is more offensive than anything that we've ever produced. So that one we should talk about, but we'll save it for the next hour. Coming up here uh, in a moment. Let me finish telling you what happened. So I'm just walking in front of this lady, filling the meters, being cheery, and and when we come up to the the main street, to a crossing point at the main street, she steps out into the, the crosswalk as though she's going to cross, and then she jumps back and starts going the other direction, and then she steps out again. And sh- there's cars waiting to go now, and they're not. They're like, should we go? Mm-hmm. Wait, she keeps jumping in front of us. And so she she kept like, jumping back and forth and really, you know, essentially committing disorderly conduct. Like one of the definitions of disorderly conduct that's like real is blocking traffic, and that's what she okay. was doing. And I'm thinking, wow, she's acting in a really erratic manner and playing a, a silly game with me. But she's known for playing this particular game where she'll pretend to go in one direction and then change her direction to try to fool the Robin Hooder. Yeah. And so she was playing this little game. So I thought, all right, well, I better go grab my video camera because she's acting erratic and who knows what she's going to do. It's also not unheard of for the parking enforcers to tell lies and things like that. So that's one of the reasons why that they get recorded a lot. Just, yeah, I don't, you. I don't blame you. I don't blame you for that. I so mean, I went and I grabbed the camera. If something, if there's an incident happening, especially, I mean, if there's nothing happening, it's a boring video. But and if I'm, you've got right. something, I she understand gave me that. something to record. So I went and I grabbed the camera, and that's when I, you know, I I started recording. Then she got even more upset. She started playing that little game with me, and that's when I laughed at her because it was ridiculous behavior. She kept turning back and forth 180 degrees in two minutes. She turns 18 times and covers <laughs> the same ground. It's funny. <laughs> and I'm going to laugh at people who are doing ridiculous things, and I'm not going to apologize for it because it was funny. There's more coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Hour two's next. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. 
and no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,190, silver around $16.23, and Bitcoin's trading around $364.20. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is presented by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. They've created a menu of food that's so good, so easy to make, you'll find yourself eating it every day, even though it has a shelf life of up to 25 years. eFoods Direct is offering 10% off to all Liberty Beat listeners. Just go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for your savings today. In the news, a Harris County, Texas deputy constable in Houston has been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after firing his gun at a woman while driving through southwest Houston. Kenneth Kaplan was a deputy with Precinct 6. On November 11th, he allegedly pulled up next to a car, rolled his window down, and shot at the woman inside, with investigators saying the bullets grazed the woman's head. Kaplan was off-duty at the time of the incident. He was arrested and taken into custody on Wednesday. Plans by the Department of Homeland Security and the Central Intelligence Agency to delete thousands of insignificant records have information activists up in arms. The National Archives and Records Administration had proposed deleting government records that lack administrative, legal, research, or other value. That would include records from the Department of Defense and Department of Justice, the CIA, and DHS. Some of the DHS records include files on the Einstein 3 network monitoring system, which contains a wealth of information, including metadata such as email and IP addresses. On Wednesday, seven United Nations human rights experts called on President Obama not to yield to pressure from the CIA to redact portions of the Senate Intelligence Committee report on CIA torture. The experts released an open letter to Obama stating that his decision will have far-reaching consequences for victims of human rights violations everywhere and for the credibility of the United States. The Liberty Beat, sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Consideration for the Liberty Beat comes from Margie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. Trappers in Saskatchewan, Canada, recently established a roadblock to keep oil companies from operating on their land. The Dean people of Dakarmi are Aboriginal First Nations in northern Canada and have a long history of trapping for a living. They say that way of life is now being interrupted by security gates and operations for mineral and oil exploration. 
Bobby Montgrand said the province's let it burn forest fire policy has also decimated wildlife and destroyed cabins, making it increasingly difficult to make a living in a culturally sustainable way. The police chief of the Houston, Texas Police Department has said he plans to put body cameras on all uniformed officers within one year. The cameras have already been worn by 100 HPD officers as part of a pilot program. Mayor Anise Parker has stated she supports the plan, but finding the funds will be an issue. Chief Charles McClellan says he believes they can put cameras on all 5,400 officers for around $7 million. The Liberty Beat is made possible by the support of Midas Resources Incorporated helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? Well, the Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more details, just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, November 28th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. A family of five is found alive in the suburbs. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The Holzapple family, long feared missing or spiritually dead, was found alive in the Chicago suburb of Buffalo Grove today, somehow managing to survive in the hostile environment for more than eight years. Rescuers discovered the five-person clan after a survey plane spotted a signal fire from a barbecue grill. To protect themselves from the elements during their long ordeal, the Holzapples fashioned a three-bedroom ranch-style lean-to with brick facing and white aluminum siding. Paramedic Mary Gill was first on the scene. They were all suffering from severe cultural malnutrition. The Holes apples have been returned to civilization for now, though trips to the Art Institute of Chicago and a nice Peruvian restaurant intended to reacquaint them with urban living have been met with confusion and resistance. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, you have Ian here. And Dale. And Mark. And Dale has joined the side of the city of Keene. He has (laughs) called me a harasser, and uh, we will get into uh, that I'd like to just pare it down. I just think you're an ass. Well, that's a douche. I like douche. But but, but you can spell ass out of harasser. Yeah, okay. we, sh- we really should read my, my, my article at some point. And I, would I like feel like that'll that. kick off some of where I'm coming from. Because there's been a lot of discussion about the uh, the activism that has happened here in Keene, specifically Robin Hooding, which uh, I consider to be one of the best forms of activism that activists here have ever uh, been involved in. But there have been some, uh, some, you know, some difficulties along the way. Robin Hooding, of course, is saving people from parking tickets. You walk in front of the parking enforcer, fill a, an expired meter, thereby preventing the enforcer from being able to write a ticket. Some of the conversations or the statements that have been made in those encounters have been called douchey uh, yep. by Dale or harassing. Uh, Not legal well. harassment. I don't know what the legal mm-hmm. definition is, and I, so I don't know if it is. Uh, but well, my basic, co- my judgment as just a uh, polite human being or someone yeah. who attempts to be a polite human being is that it's harassment. Was it harassment yeah. when I told the DEA to leave town? Uh, I don't know. I didn't see you do that. I don't. I don't so know. I mean, if you did wanna... you, how long were you following them around? I mean, oh, how I, often I, I hung following? around for. Well, they were they raided the uh, they raided the local head shop. Uh, in town, no, no. See, that's see. I, I, I thought that was. I think I thought that was called for and very uh-huh. appropriate. Like, okay. yeah. I, I mean, just went. I, I went at him for. I mean, I was. I out mean, there you for could hours. do that about anyone. I could yeah. take anyone who, uh, who pays taxes and and just follow them around and shout at them how they're supporting the war effort and stuff. I wouldn't do that. I mean, well, most people paying taxes are under duress. They're most not people who are paying state. taxes have been uh, most of the population and the people who do not share our perspectives about government. Are have been indoctrinated their entire lives mm-hmm. to believe that it's necessary and justified, and that there's no, that it's that it's it, they they might be 
that's what they believe. They believe differently than us. I don't have an issue with those I don't those consider people. all those people to be evil. I consider me them to neither. have They're disagreements just with me. So we all draw a line somewhere. I don't consider the bureaucrats to be evil either. So you draw a line, too, about when you think it's warranted or justified or effective or appropriate to start shouting at someone yeah, for their beliefs line, being wrong. My line is, and I don't agree with shouting at people, but my line uh, is, uh, okay. uh, my, my, and I did Maybe raise my use voice. That word, but, I did yeah. raise my voice in the video of the parking enforcer, but I didn't shout at her uh, at any point. And, uh, yeah, my line is if you're working for an aggressive criminal gang. I mean, the average person who's paying taxes is not working for the aggressive You, you realize you spoke libertarianese just now. Yeah, that's right. right? I, and I understand it because I speak that language. Right. But that's a thing. That's a thing when we're trying to, again, trying to reach hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. We're speaking to people who aren't there yet. Mm. The, there's a talent to being a teacher. But my videos are there's, also reaching out to people who are there. <laughs> When I when I take video yeah, I of you. when I take video of a government agent uh, acting we, in a ridiculous manner, which can is, we get back to the fact that you draw your lines and someone else maybe draws their, draws their lines a little differently about when they consider that fine. kind of treatment justified? Okay. Then why do you act like you see? You're trying to paint it as if it's a very objective thing when it, when in subjective? fact it's subjective. When we decide whether we're going to be confrontational oh, or not, of course it's subjective. I think, I think it's uh, and certainly um, I make I a have arbitrary, call. I've arbitrarily drawn my line at leaving people alone who don't aggress against people. I don't want to mess with anybody who's not messing with other people. The parking enforcers get a hard time out of me sometimes. That's a lot of people, people though. That's a lot that's a lot more people that you've already said you don't you don't want to follow them around and shout at them for having yeah, beliefs no that are different than yours. I have no interest in going after people who have different beliefs as me. My interest is going after the people who are aggressing against innocent That's people. That's anyone who's willingly paying taxes and thinks they're totally that. justified in doing that. I don't think someone Why? who's paying taxes is committing aggression. We Again, all pay taxes. It's, any, it's anyone out there who's willing to take You've a parking taxes. enforcer. I've what about taxes. all the people who morally support the parking meter made? You know, I, they, I I disagree with that, too. But If they confront if, me in mm -hmm. public, I'll have a conversation with them. I'm not going to yell at them. I'm not going to call them evil or anything like that. I don't think the parking enforcers are evil. They think they're doing good. I all, I have always said all along, I've said, pick your battles. Mm -hmm. Right. There, there's a there's a you can you can escalate a situation or not. You can handle a situation in a way, I think, that that will will help people to see your point of view. And and you can certainly inspire plenty of people to move here in ways other than harassing the parking meter maids that are writing five dollar tickets. Yeah, I mean, yeah, certainly kind of you could pick a lot of people. If you're going to pick the person yeah. who's writing a five dollar ticket, then then there's a lot of people that you can pick. And Would it matter if the ticket was fifty dollars? Would that change how you feel about it? It's it's uh, they're going to steal your car no matter what. I I feel like you it's. Because a lot of people to, bring up, though, oh, it's okay. just a $5 ticket, as though that somehow yeah, well, makes the aggression it's, less this important. Is, it's not an objective thing. I can't give you an objective line. Again, yeah. I, we started this conversation with, I think, where this whole conversation falls apart is when we try to take something like activism and something like educating people and something like trying to, uh, mm -hmm. try, whatever your goal is. You can you make a judgment call about whether what you're doing is effective at accomplishing that goal. What are My you giving goal, up? How much effort are you putting so into yes, it? What potential yes. you're getting back? That is a subjective measure. It's not arbitrary, it's mind you. Arbitrary means that you really your judgments, your criteria are so here's make how no I subjectively sense in reality. Look at it, right? Well, this is and the general conversation. So why do you why why do you keep asking me? Well, in this situation, is it okay to harass people? In that situation, is it okay to I harass people? I want to know people? what your arbitrary I've, subjective I've, me you know, measures I've, are. I've done many of the things that you've done now, but mm -hmm. I make I I, I, I I have to you have to make the call about any particular time. And and there's here's the thing too. Like I liked it when you went into to pay your taxes and one dollar bills, and you some filmed people it, hated that, and you knew that that's 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 fine. I disagree with those people. We're, okay. we're to have these kinds of things. Some people didn't like that I was inconveniencing people. And this people is there. why we're having a conversation, yeah. right? Because I have an I have an opinion on these matters that are subjective. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so does everyone else. Yeah. Okay. So and so uh I liked it when you did that. And you weren't you don't go and do that every day. No, I haven't. You don't done go it in since there then. every single moment that they're in there doing in that office doing their, their job to you made a point, you made your point with that video and you left. But you know the point of that then, wasn't to convince the women in the office, right? No, I'm I'm well aware of that. Right. The point but of that, that wasn't was harassment. It was like I'm making a point here. No one I'm gonna take it was. thirty minutes of your time. You even bought pizza for them to to not be douchey. I bought pizza for the people <laughs> in the line more than well, anyone fine. else. The people yeah. who were, who but were see, inconvenienced that was, see, by you understand. Though you made you understood that there's a PR battle, but, but there is matter. a PR issue at work here. 
And you, that you were trying to PR. make... No, that like, wasn't apology. about PR. That was about, you know, the, I knew I was inconveniencing the people who were there. It wasn't yeah. about, oh, well, what will people watching this think? It was about, oh, there's going to be people who I'm going to inconvenience who are there in that office. I want to do at least something for those people. Well, so, I still don't understand. Like, why you say it's okay to do what you're doing with the, the meter maid, but mm-hmm. not with someone who willingly pays taxes to support what the meter maid is doing. Yeah, I consider those people to be the victims. Why? I mean, they, I, well, they're well, not they, victims they, they if they completely support, support what she's doing. Oh, well, like I said, I, you know, only have You're some... drawing your own line is what I'm saying. Everybody draws their own lines. Yes. Yeah. So of so when we and then when we have a conversation about this, you keep trying to get to you 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 act as because I have my lines, which I mm-hmm. think are completely reasonable. I don't think harassing the meter maid has accomplished anything. And and I think it's really well, bad from a PR point of view. And and I think uh, it's accomplished so millions of dollars in press coverage. Wow. <laughs> this, I mean, and that's not what I, do. I don't want. Like I, I I was thrilled when they didn't say Free State Project in that Colbert video. Free yeah, State and they I didn't felt the same attach way. the Free State Project to to what Free Keen is doing. Right, and the Colbert video uh, video was a video that was aired on the Colbert Report where we're talking about uh, where they talking about the Free Keen Squad or Robin Hooders who went mm-hmm. around and filled meters. And I felt similarly as Dale. I felt like, oh, jeez. I, I I felt like they were attacking me in the video. Hey, comedy mm-hmm. has uh, – usually when there's a joke, somebody's the butt of the joke. Yeah, but I didn't right? get to – you got to pick whether you were the butt of the joke. You, I didn't. You, you, you don't have – Why don't, don't you have, get out and do some newsworthy you activism? Not, you're not – and by the way, the Free State Project has gotten lots of really great press. Yes. They're getting – they're expanding dramatically yeah. without – A lot of without, it came from Free Keen, by the way. Be, without acting like uh, douchebags on videos harassing meter maids. Mm. You can do it without that. That, that feels like a kind of – like a, a, a lazy cry for attention way to try and get coverage, and and it's not true that it, you know any PR is good PR. Oh, or I any disagree. Publicity is good publicity. Uh, the publicity That's simply not true. The, the Westboro Frank Baptist King Church hits. gets tons of publicity. They're great at it, and it has absolutely hurt their message dramatically. And I'm grateful for that. Free Keen's website got ten times the usual visits we normally do the next day after the Colbert and report. some death threats. No, just really one death threat. 855 450 free. That's 855. Web visits are of no value if you make nothing from it. 450 3733. We make things from it because, you know, people come to the website, they learn about the Free State Project, and they learn about what we're doing here, and they move here as a result of what we're doing. We're coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also invite you to our website. Go to freetalklive.com. But that's not the only website worth visiting. Antiwar.com is doing a lot of great work. Yeah, antiwar.com is a website that takes uh, foreign relations, especially uh, United States foreign relations, and uh, looks at it, I, probably because the United States claims for itself to be the, uh, the policeman of the world. But they look at all situations where nations come into conflict, uh, conflict where war's a possibility, and they try to give the uh, the standpoint, the, the pacifist standpoint, the standpoint where, you know, it's not okay to use guns and bombs to solve your problems. This is valuable. They get a lot of views there. But the FBI hassled the heck out of their donor base. And that's the only way they make money. It's not through ads. Believe me, it's very difficult to, uh, to get ads on a website that advocates for peace. So they need you. If you re use antiwar.com, if you haven't gone to antiwar.com, please go check it out. But if you use antiwar.com, if you read their news, that kind of thing, please donate. Call them today. Uh, you just go to antiwar.com slash donate. The telephone number's there. They proudly and gladly take Bitcoin, so you can be anonymous if that's what you wish to do. If you don't want to be on some FBI database, it's antiwar.com slash donate. If you're not on some FD FBI database, you probably should be ashamed of your behavior. Antiwar.com slash donate. All right, let's go to the phones. You can bring up anything you want. We'll talk more about activist tactics. Uh, some are saying that... Free keen activists are ruining the liberty movement. Now, that's not what you're saying necessarily. Uh, not, Dale. not. I, I, I mm. some people are saying that. Someone posted a blog comment that we've set the movement back decades. Uh, we'll I, I don't want to be too hyperbolic. We'll I don't want to be that hyperbolic. With that kind conversation of conversation in a moment here. But Tom is on the line in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, what happened to. Uh, Donella Connors out there in uh, Missouri there. She was the one who was hit by a uh, non-lethal bean bag, and she lost the sight of her left oh, eye. Uh, this is, hmm. uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of coverage about that, but, uh, you know, basically, uh, first they didn't uh, indict Officer Darren Wilson for gunning down uh, Michael Brown. And then, uh, you know, people are getting angry. Well, she said she and her boyfriend pulled into a Ferguson gas station on Tuesday morning, hours after the decision. And uh, then as they were leaving the station, the St. Louis County Mounties came and, like, surrounded their car. And the driver, the boyfriend, is trying to drive around them. Oh, no, he was heading straight towards us. And they, they fired this non-lethal beanbag. She was, uh, she's pregnant, and she was hit in the eye with this, and she lost the sight of one eye. 
and it is just more proof that no human being will ever be safe until the last cop is dead. Oh, God. That's a horrible thing to say, Tom, uh, but thanks for the call. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I don't agree with uh, the, what Tom has been suggesting here for now years on this show, and that is that violence is somehow going to be the solution to the problems with the police. I think that if you were to use violence, uh, then you will be made to look like you know, a psychopath, and you'll be made to look like the bad guy, You'll never be able to really have a chance to defend yourself uh, verbally because eventually they're going to catch you and kill you if you use violence uh, against the police. So all, all of the reasons are against using violence. Uh, plus, you're also using their own tool. You know, you're lowering yourself to their level. They're the ones who should be seen using violence. If there's if someone's going to be using violence, the police will, should be the only ones who do it because if liberty people supposedly then you know start fighting back against the police, they'll be just labeled as the enemy. They'll be uh, the excuse for expanding more of the police state. And when you kill off if, if people kill off police, then more violent police will take their place. The ones who are really interested in bashing some heads and killing more people and, you know, doing violence, they the, the scarier cops will take place of the bad cops that are already out there. So the people so, willing to take that job at that point are yeah. going to be some real gung-ho. Right, because they, they would be taking a job where they would think that they're going to be under fire by some, you know, anti-government crazies. I, I have I, one of my, I have a good friend, actually, who's a police officer. I'm not going to go into detail about it because. Mm-hmm. I don't want to talk about someone on the air, privacy, uh, you know, invade their privacy in that way. But I have a friend who's a police officer, and he's, I think, an exception to the, I have a general attitude about cops that they tend to be bad because they they are in a position of power, and there's sort of this clique that forms, and they look after each other's backs, and they tend to go bad. Uh, there are exceptions, certainly, but but uh, but but like you said, you know, if, if, um, if you, if you, See, my thought is if I just go on a rampage against anyone who's a cop, it's not going to – the police force isn't going to go away tomorrow. Nope. Right? So I, I, I'm not going to – I'm on good terms with my friend who's a cop, right? And uh, and he's – like I said, he's an exception to the general rule. I, I, would, I don't want him to quit because he might be replaced with someone, someone worse. who slams someone's head into the pavement. Yep. Right. Uh, over something stupid and un- completely unjustified. So uh, we know that happens. We keep catching it. They keep catching it on cameras, I think, because more people have cell phones and video cameras in their hand at the time. So more and more of it's being caught. But it's been happening. Right. We believe that. Mm. Right. So that's why I'm not going to. So here's my thought. Like, so he's he's got to be at least as bad as a parking meter maid. I mean, who's as bad as a parking meter a, maid? A cop, any cop. Well, it depends. I, you know, I mean, what, what, why, why, why are you drawing a line now about that? About killing but not people? About, no, well, why would do you want to harass cops? Uh, uh, just follow them around and say, why are you harassing people? Um, I guess yeah, called cop block. Uh, when you go out and you do cop block on the streets, usually uh, you have things to say. The dif- the difference between cop watch and cop block yeah, maybe. is a cop block. Th- this is the difference. Uh, yeah. The difference because cop watch came first. That was okay. where they encouraged yeah, people. Uh, hey, record the police, but don't say anything. And then right. cop block says, "Do say something. Speak okay. up and let the police know." Yeah, that depending what on doing what they're doing, I think wrong. it is appropriate. But I'm not going to follow like like I could follow my friend around who happens to be a cop and mm-hmm. and just kind of badger him all the time just for having that job, which is essentially what you're doing with the meter mix. She's going around and That's doing not, no, uh, what she does every day, and you know she's going to do. If the cop is helping, like for instance, I've seen a cop help an old lady change a tire on the side of the road. I'm not going to give a cop a hard time for doing something that's a good thing. When the cops are going after bad guys, I'll help the police. They're not, there's not a single cop out there who's not who hasn't probably written a ticket for someone who who did yeah. and hurt if i anyone see them or... doing the wrong thing i'm going to call them out for it so when those same cops who you know if that same cop who i seen i've seen helping someone is then later on that same you know day in the college neighborhood arresting a college kid for having an open container i'm going to let that cop know that i don't appreciate what he's doing i'll say you know i might say something like hey earlier today you were helping that lady change that uh, her tire that's what i think you should be doing with your time i don't think you should be doing this and if somebody wants to call that harassment, then I'm sorry, it's, I don't it's, agree. It's the sort of it's the it's when it's endless, it becomes harassment. When it's like endless. saying your statement is one thing, but when you're out there on a regular basis 
just shouting things that they've heard before. But I'm not on that. And you know they disagree basis. with you. You know they still believe that their job, they believe that their job is necessary and everything. We haven't convinced them that it's not. We haven't convinced most of the population that government is unnecessary and mm-hmm. that the free market is better. Well, I'm not there to convince so, the police. I'm there to reach out to the college students. I'm there to reach out to the victims. I'm there to give those people information about their rights. And if there's video recorded of it, that video is not to convince the police. That video is to convince people, hey, there's activists I, here who are willing to stand up to these people and what they're doing with hurting other that, people. That video that you up. followed, the when you said the woman was acting erratically, mm-hmm. it was in response to you. I watched it. That's right. She's trying to uh, uh, evade you. Yeah, in a but, ridiculous <laughs> manner. She could have just walked one direction and gone in one direction. And, and you would have followed me. her. She no, was I trying to get have. you to stop following had her. She Every left time the she area, changed directions, you kept nope, following had her. Had she left the area, I would not have followed her. I didn't get that from watching the video. I didn't get that from watching the video. I don't think most people did. 450 Freeze, the toll-free number here. It's Free Talk Live. Now through November 30th, get three months of GoFood storable food free when you buy a one-year supply. Get six weeks free with your purchase of a six-month supply and three weeks free with your purchase of a three-month supply. GoFoods are storable for 25 years, non-GMO, kosher certified, and quick fix. Call 800-648-9753 or on the web at www.storefoodnow.com. That's www.storefoodnow.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. 
That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for you with your calls and thoughts. You just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype on in at username lrn.fm, and you can tell me how I am single-handedly destroying the Liberty Movement uh, here on Free Talk Live. I'm exaggerating. That's not yes. what Dale is. That's not what Dale is saying. Trying not to be hyperbolic. But there are some it. people who have uh, said things like that. In fact, I like what uh, Sean Murphy, one of our listeners, said on Facebook. I think he said that uh, if he had a Bitcoin for each time that uh, Free Keen had been credited with destroying the Liberty Movement, that he'd be <laughs> very, very wealthy. Uh, but go ahead. Mark, we'll uh, come back to that. Bit- speaking of Bitcoins, Bitcoin's still on the rise. And to prove it to you, you can head on over to the second Bitcoin uh, Texas Bitcoin Conference at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. It's going to be at the end of March in 2015. It's loaded with the best and the brightest speakers, the latest exhibitions in Bitcoin, as well as hosting the second Million Dollar Bitcoin 2.0 Hackathon. And this is what sets the Texas Bitcoin Conference apart from other Bitcoin conferences, is this hackathon. At this hackathon, they give a million dollars to the right startups in Bitcoin that are going to change the world. They had four, uh, you know, businesses, startups, uh, ideas that got uh, the money the last time, the last go around. And it's really, it, these are incredible businesses. Check it out. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. They're even inviting the Texas legislators to show them how firsthand that not enacting these complicated regulations encourages innovation and job creation. It's March the 28th and 29th at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. Get signed up. Get your tickets. You can get $25 off with coupon code Free Talk Live, all one word. That's uh, making the tickets $125. Not much at all. TexasBitcoinConference.com. All right. So there's a, there's been a lot of conversation that has gone on thus far. We're halfway through this episode of the show. We're on the live Sunday edition. Dale Everett's joining us from AnarchyInYourHead.com. And uh, Dale's an, an old friend who's a former co-host on Free Talk Live, living in Manchester now, so we don't sadly get to see you as often as, uh, as I might in, like. Inventor of the word Keniac, which has now Was been embraced. You? I am the one who came up with Keniac. I proudly embraced it. I called myself a Keniac. <laughs> I've been a free Keen activist in the past. Mm-hmm. And now I want to distance myself from mm. Free Keen. I, I actually I want a, a big space bubble with Free Keen. Well, the blog that's like just a, a lot of libertarians. Free, free like Keen's a just a blog, so you know Free Keen doesn't do well, things. It's, it's a just brand. A of hand. It's a brand. Yeah. You understand branding? How it like, like people? It makes an impression on people, and then people create associations. That's how our brain works. Yeah. You understand when you show up with a camera, certain people who are recognizable and have been seen a lot in Free Keen videos. Yep. Things that have been posted to the blog, there's a branding associated with it, and uh, and and that brand carries. Uh, it's recognizable. It's tr- it's a strong when you brand. Want press when you want press. What, where do you want it? You want it on Free Keen, right? So uh, you you're really proud of the press that it gets. So you understand branding. Obviously. Sure, sure. And okay. obviously everybody has their viewpoint of uh, what they see on Free Keen, but I think it's important to point out Free Keen is just a blog site. It's something, it's a place where activism is reported on. So mm. sometimes that activism is offensive. Sometimes it's more offensive than others. Sometimes it's, you know, feeding the hungry. And of course, some people who hate uh, the activists will find something wrong with feeding the hungry. I mean, sure. so there's people out there who hate and, everything that yeah. uh, that those we people do. aren't worth a whole lot of effort to try and do anything about. But what you're saying you know, is, and, and so what my understanding is so far, and I'm sure you're going to correct me because um, I'm sure I'll have this wrong to some extent. But uh, yeah, you're, my you're probably about to straw man me. But my, go ahead. Well, yeah, yeah, my, my <laughs> I've been pretty clear about specific things that I take well, issue is, with. This is me ahead. just you know expressing how I'm understanding you, right? And you okay. can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so my understanding is you are upset by some of the things that have gone on here, specifically what you consider to be harassing of the parking enforcement officers, um, maybe some other What things, is your definition of harassment? Harassment? I yeah. don't apply you, harassment to government employees and because they're supposed to be subject to being talked to, right? If you're working for the government, especially if you're the, the, You didn't really enforcer. answer my question. I said, what do you call? What do you consider to be harassment? Harassment you're, is You're basically when, justifying harassment. harassment. You're saying it's okay to do it with these people. Harassment is where you uh, give 
okay, so to the technical definition of harassment, which I agree with, is mm-hmm. where if I'm saying things to you, Dale, and you, uh, let's say I'm sending you messages on Facebook, or I see you on the street, and I'm like, hey, you know, F you, and your show sucks, and da 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 whatever it is, I don't like your hair, uh, you know, and then you turn to me and say, Ian, stop talking to me, or even if you don't, mind, don't know my name, hey, mm-hmm. you, stop talking to me, I don't want to hear that. And then I keep doing it. Mm-hmm. That's the definition Endless, of harassment. Endless, kind of in, just constant badgering. I can't get away from at it, any right? point. Yeah. It, yeah. Once I've been yeah. told, I don't want to talk. I don't want you right. to talk and, to and me. And so, so really, so you're not denying that you're harassing them. You're saying it's justified in their case. No, I am denying that it's harassment because they're government employees. Oh, I would deny it's harassment too. I would make that yeah. point that when you take a well, job, again, I'm not trying to legally right. define it as harassment. No, no, no. I'm I, saying a common sense notion of what a, what harassment well, is. Uh, I consider for a second that mm-hmm. I co- consider the common individual to be generally, historically speaking, a dog not worthy of freedom. Okay, like right. they have not considered, they don't haven't spent any time agree thinking with about you, it. By the way, no, you that. don't. I know, I know you don't. But that's what I think. I think that the average person spends little time thinking about things, and they shouldn't have opinions about things that they spend a little time thinking about. When you're a government bureaucrat, you take a paycheck. Um, to do a government job, you are saying that I am willing to take feedback from the public. Right? Yes, absolutely. Like you're supposed yep. to be able to petition the government. Right. You should be able to tell the parking meter maid what you think of her. That's mm. right. But then so she I don't says, consider that rest. Right. But when how, I t- how but long when I and how many her. times? But like, when I tell you, you as many times you think as you she, want to petition the government. Do you think she doesn't know what you think about her? No, no. Hold on, just a second. She, the legislator, the United States legislature, decided to stop the uh, the petitioning the government aspect of the first amendment post because of slavery and because of abolitionists that just kept writing letters in uh-huh. and that just people that said you know you just shouldn't be able to own black people because they really believed right. in this I, and the legislature <laughs> said we're not taking any you more know, feedback before you go on i don't think we're going to argue i don't think we're in disagreement about no. this i don't think that you should not be legally able to do what you're doing mm-hmm. i, I want to be yeah. clear on that i don't I, I, like you're you said just saying you're right it looks she bad. is a government employee you're just it's saying it just, looks bad. it's not just looks bad it like yes it looks bad and for what like what are you gaining out here's of it? what i here's okay right so, here's so what, yes you're absolutely you're turn, here's a, okay you uh, let's stop there mm-hmm. you're saying it looks bad I think it's douchey. I don't think it accomplishes anything. I don't understand the point of saying your opinion to this woman over and over and mm-hmm. over again and following her around until she jitters back and forth because she she's trying that. to get away from you. That's not how you get away from someone. You uh, turn uh, back and forth over uh, and over again, 180 degrees. Uh, you walk she tried in one to tell direction. you to stop following her. That didn't work. I don't know. Yeah. It's my uh, job yes, to follow her. You're allowed to. I've already agreed to that. Mm-hmm. I'm not denying it. I still think it's douchey. Okay. What, is it, what do I mean when I say douche? Because that's a vague term, right? So uh, and and I'm going to summarize. I, I say this in my in my article, but a douche is someone who has a really high opinion of themselves, possibly um, largely out of line with how uh, other people think of them, right? <laughs> so so um and and there's and 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 I think what I try to talk about in the article is this tactic of preaching to people who don't share the belief about what you're preaching. It's like if I preach, like most people think of religious people when they think of preaching, and I'm mm-hmm. saying, Ian, you're going to go to hell. And I can hold signs and shout it at you and tell you that you're sinning uh, because God says you're not supposed to do that and you're going to go to hell. And I can shout that at you over and over and over again. But if you don't accept my premise mm-hmm. that there is this deity who created the universe and that they are the establisher, that, he, that this deity is the establishment of all the morality in the universe and therefore you're sinning because he told you not to do something and you're doing it. If you don't accept that premise, then then – we're I'm I'm skipping a big step, right? <laughs> Which is to convince you that this I'm deity exists. I'm not trying exists, to convince them, right? No, no, okay, I get it. But but the point is, you 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 acknowledge that you're just preaching something to someone who doesn't. That's not that's doesn't right. Accept. And that's it's, most I'm, of the population. I'm talking for the camera. I'm that's, talking for the yes, video. Ninety-seven percent. I don't know exactly how much it is of the population believes in uh, that government's necessary. I want all the three percent. Give, give me the three percent. Okay. And move them. Well, to people New that Hampshire. are okay. moving, moving, they're coming in and out. The revolving door of Keene. They come here. They maybe get arrested a couple times. Realize they can't keep doing what they're doing without getting arrested more. They get used up and they leave. Or they just stop doing that Not much activism problem. anymore. There's people who leave Manchester too. You just don't know about it because, or you don't hear about it as often because oh, I'm there's sure more they do. people. There's I'm more sure people do. in Manchester, mm. and Manchester does not have the sort of fishbowl stage atmosphere that Keene does. So when somebody comes into Keene and then they leave, like Sam, who was on our show uh, in the past, then you know people. So what do you feel that. you've accomplished? With
with it. With, with nice. your, what, what kinds of what I are some accomplishments? You, I, I, sure. I, I want to talk about this because uh, I think this is really important, Dale. Is that mm. the people that leave, the specifically the free keen, the people who are drawn by free keen, and the ones that leave? Because I want you, Ian, to tell me who stays because you should be able to point to the activists that have Lots stayed. Lots of people have stayed. There's more coming up here in moments. You can take control of the airwaves. And what did I accomplish or what does this accomplish? Uh, this is Free Talk Live. We'll come back with that. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Do you have relatives and friends that are convinced there is no need ever to prepare for any kind of emergency? Are these also folks you buy Christmas presents for? At 30dayfoodsupply.com, we can solve both of these problems at the same time. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. We can ship your Christmas presents directly to them. Choose from our original $99 30-day food supply, our long-term storage vegan burger mixes, and other oatmeal, soups, porridges, beans, and granolas for everyday use. All products are non-GMO, MSG-free, and vegetarian. Most are gluten, soy, and nut-free. Call 541-229-0010 today. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low, cutting out the middleman by buying directly from their producers in Oregon. Remember, only $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit the website 30dayfoodsupply.com. Call 541-229-0010. 30dayfoodsupply.com. 541-229-0010. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. 
Dale shouting, Marcus shouting. You can't hear it because we have the mics turned off. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's the number, and you can bring up anything uh, that you want. Although the the focus here tonight has been on activism, bad activism, you bad boys. Ninety percent good activism, ten yeah. percent bad activism. Can we just talk about the ten percent? That's what we've been talking about. Uh, is the ten percent here tonight? And you would ask the question, what's it accomplishing? What is uh, calling a parking enforcer uh, a thief? For instance, what is that accomplishing? What is what is being yeah. mean to them? You know uh, what? We, you know something we've skipped doing is giving a quick background of Robin Hooding and how it sort of evolved over the years. Sure, that's and, worth and, doing. And 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 one of the best activists of all time, in my opinion, Lauren Canario. Uh, I, there's a video she did that, in, that I still credit with getting me to actually get my butt up and come to New Hampshire and start mm-hmm. doing stuff. And I've done a lot of activism. I've skipped a lot of – I've wasted a lot of my – I don't want to call it wasting. It's not wasting. I sacrificed a lot of my time to sit in courtrooms, and and, and I blogged about it. I, wa- I, I provided moral support for people there. I've been in court myself for doing some activism. Uh, I, ha- I, I almost ended up with something on my record. I – escape that but uh and so forth for doing activism so i'm speaking from a position i'm not a keyboard warrior okay no doubt. can we give the can we say that and you got cred lauren I, the, I, this video of lauren canario's she got pulled over by a cop she uh was driving without a license or something mm-hmm. which is something she's done before because she doesn't feel you should have to have one and i agree with her i don't believe you i don't believe we should have to ask permission from the government to travel this is a basic uh thing for a lot of libertarians believe she just sat there and did not respond to the police officer. She didn't act afraid of him, which, yep. by the way, will rattle a police officer a lot because they're that's how they maintain control in a lot of cases is keeping you afraid of them. So if you just don't act afraid, you're going to rattle that police officer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she just let him ramble, and he sounded like uh, – he sounded ridiculous. I she didn't that say video. a word to him. It was a great video. I she did didn't, one of my she own. didn't challenge him and say, you're stealing from people. Yeah. You're pulling me over. You don't have any right to pull me over. She's, she, she, was, she would be right if she said that. But her, her approach has always been one of, of being the calm one and mm-hmm. letting the other person lose their, their marbles <laughs> on video yeah. and making them look bad, right? And that's a kind of brilliance. Depends on who you ask, And right? I feel like, that, like you, that's kind of been, a lot of that's been lost now because you, now when we look like we're trying to de-escalate the situation and there's a government person who appears to be escalating the situation and we're being calm and just asking calm questions and things, mm-hmm. there's a certain tactic to that that I don't see, that I see being lost in a lot of this. And that's the 10% of stuff. That I am expressing a strong opinion on that makes me want to distance myself from freaking. So, Ian, I asked you a question. That question was, who has been ac- uh, uh, attracted to New Hampshire because of free keen activism? And can you be more effective in your activism to bring people here by being less confrontational or more confrontational? Because you guys are producing different videos. The d- different videos attract different people at different times. And a lot of times, as Dale said, people... You're, what you're attracting to some extent are people that come here for the activism too keen and then they leave. There's a lot of people that have been that and way. And people who are flat out trying to distance themselves from, from Free Keen. I, I named several of them during the break. I'm not going to do it on the air. But uh, you know them uh, mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. I know them personally. I want to distance myself from Free Keen now. I'm not kidding. And I've been I'm, doing it for years. I'm, I am exhibiting a degree of ostracism of Free Keen. Not to punish Free Keen, not to change anyone's behavior because I don't believe. Care. I mean, the I don't website believe... doesn't care if you ostracize it. Oh, right? Lord. This is, this is the Ian, same. Anyone who, who, anyone who. You uh, mean who, the people associated with Free Keen? People associated with Free, Keen? Free Keen, Free Keen bloggers, uh-huh. uh, people who post videos of their stuff that they're doing, the activism that they're gotcha. doing on Free Keen. It is a brand, and you know what a brand is. So yeah. let's get beyond that. <laughs> um, so. And I'm not doing it to try and change anyone's behavior because I don't think there's any hope for that. I've tried that for years. Well, free kings so for me, monolith, it's right? really just covering my own ass. And and mm-hmm. I'm thinking anyone who wants to do good activism needs to clearly distinguish themselves from free keen and distance hmm. themselves from it. Okay. And that's the opinion I'm coming to because it feels so hopeless to have a just to have a dialogue with constructive criticism from people who are otherwise your allies, right? right. So because- the constructive criticism is always stop doing it this way. Because people are offended by it. That's that's what I've been hearing. I'm offended for by a it. long time. Okay. I, I would. I am, I expect I am ashamed if I it. acted that way. I would be ashamed of my behavior mm-hmm. to someone. Just uh, yes, I disagree strongly with the parking attendant person. 
but I, I would not behave like that to her. So I you would I, not say, and I certainly hey, wouldn't I try to catch it wrong. on camera yeah. and be proud of it. Well, that's, I, it's a different it's a different approach to activism. And the fact is, uh, first of all, you mentioned Lauren Canario. She was the person who started Robin Hooding. I don't think mm-hmm. you mentioned that. Yes, uh, she, I, I meant to. I'm sorry. She was the one who started this idea of saving people from getting parking tickets, and it be, has be, you know blown up since then. Many more activists has have been involved. Lauren was one of the influences on me as far as moving here. And what what mo- really motivated me was her willingness to stand up to yes. these government agents and be very very strong and she's a very small woman you know mm-hmm. she's sitting there while the police are arresting her and she's refusing to move and she's not cooperating with the arrest and you know there are a lot of people who <laughs> watch those videos and they're offended by what she does sure uh, what she does is offensive because she's not obeying some people, the state some people will be i'm not and again a lot of it i base on my own feelings about it like is it i look at that and i see someone i see a side who's trying to escalate the confrontation mm-hmm. and i see a side who's being completely passive who's not trying to be confrontational she frankly isn't she's they're the ones making it confrontational mm-hmm. right well, yeah. and and, I, and there's, say a, there's a certain pe- tact there's a certain most of the haters on the internet mm-hmm. don't care whether lauren's tactics or ian's tactics they just don't care there's a sm- mm-hmm. it's a small percentage of people that ian's trying to attract there's one mm-hmm. percent of people that see a video that um, i think he could do loop. that without harassing the parking meter maid though i mean well, remember you, you, what about all the other videos that you, she that started done the confrontation that, you know, in that video she was the one who started you didn't yelling catch that at me. on camera though i mean you know, you, you, did, you described to me what but even when i was walking was up to her she was the one who if you all know, i have is that video to go on it, you look like a total douche in it. Yeah, well, that's how I felt. You look, you're she's turning back and forth to get away from you, and she tells you stop following her. You don't you get know. away from someone by walking back and forth over and well, over again. Sorry, that just doesn't make sense. She, she was tries acting to crazy. walk in one direction for a while, and you keep chasing her down. So I didn't yeah, and chase she her down. And go the other way. You're I was following walking her toward her. That's all I was doing. And, <laughs> and she she's kept... picking up her pace, and you're picking up yeah. your pace. If you want to see the video, Watch the he's video, talking folks. about it's called <laughs> uh, "Parking Enforcer Loses It." You can look for it on YouTube. When she posted on Facebook. Page. The so question has been, I did not post it on I'll the Facebook that. page. The All question right. has been asked by Mark, uh, something about who has been attracted Who's here. been attracted? How many are, have stayed? Not the people that Lots have, of people have stayed. Uh, but there have by been dozens who activism. Who? There have been dozens who have left. activism that you're really proud of. Everybody's got their own. Uh, everybody's got their own path that they're on. Some people have left New Hampshire not because of you know the activism here, but because but there's their massive own life. numbers of really good hardcore activists here. Yeah, there because are, and a lot the, of them uh, credit uh, f- a lot of them credit some of the activism we've done here in Keene, specifically Derek J's victimless crime spree, mm-hmm. which is like Derek is one. You I edited think, that. You, I think I did I not edit. Derek Bo is, Davis edited that. Derek has done a lot of good activism. I have my opinions about some but of his too. But just to be too, clear, Derek J's victimless crime spree is a video that contains some of the most offensive video footage we've I'm ever recorded. I'm offended by some of it. I like most of right. it, but I'm offended by some of it myself. A yeah. lot of people are it's offended by It's similar in style movie. to the things that I'm criticizing. Yes, it is. And with Robin Hood. Right. A lot of people it. are offended by that movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, But there's people who've been attracted here by it. And people who've been attracted who are not doing the same stuff. Specifically, you know, Derek and I have had people come up to us and say, thank you for making that movie because it's what got me here to New Hampshire. It's what turned me on to what was happening in New Hampshire. Or it was some, or it was the deal closer, right? Like they'd either already heard about what mm-hmm. was happening. Like Lauren's then, video was deal closer for me. Right. Kind of, yeah. And uh, some of these people are active in politics. They're some of the best <laughs> politics activists here in New Hampshire. They've got families and stuff. Here they in Hearing. No, in well, New Hampshire, Mark was Derek asking J's for victimless names. crime spree attracts. I don't want to okay. give people's right. names out on the All air. Right. That's just well, not appropriate. Well, no, we're talking. About, had, he's talking about activists, though. People who are being very public with their activism, right? I assume. That's what my right? thought is. Uh, are you only asking me people who are doing civil Derek. disobedience, or are you public. asking me people who've moved to New Hampshire? Because, because there have been plenty of people who've moved to New Hampshire who aren't civil disobedient, non-cooperative types who were attracted by our civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and uh, holding these bureaucrats uh, most accountable. Most of which I have liked and said that I liked. Right? I've expressed an opinion about a few mm-hmm. things, but I feel thing is, are, Dale, some people uh, like some things, but they don't like other things. So the things that you right. like may not have been liked by other let's, people. Let's Read your statements, right? You, you you said that you did say these things before you read the statements, Mark. Uh-huh. Did I even answer? Did I answer your question? I'm not really sure. We're getting, I really getting... wanted to know about the activist one name <laughs> that you uh, that you attracted, but I think that it's a valid point to talk about people who aren't active, aren't outside the system, activists or whatever. Because um, that's all I care about is people coming here to New Hampshire. That's I know. my primary goal, and there's no doubt that these supposedly offensive videos have absolutely attracted people here. They right. are non-offensive videos don't get views. 
news. I'd like right. to point that out. The, 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 <laughs> what I want is I, I don't want the people who are so concerned about what the statists are going to think Lauren's, about us. Lauren's video got views quite a lot when she's just not talking. I uh, want you, the she people. didn't have to be she didn't have to escalate the situation herself for that to be a good video. She I walked past the to, cops and got arrested. Let, let's for talk about Ian's order. opinions of other libertarians who disagree with him. I want come, people to come here at some point who are courageous. I want people to come here who are willing to stand up for themselves, stand up for their rights, and speak against the violations of people's rights that are happening regularly. That's who I want to attract here, not the people who are always licking their fingers, sticking it up in the air, wondering where the public opinion is going to blow. It's Free Talk Live. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. So these deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, November 30th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,167 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $380. Antiwar.com reports months of fighting over the key North Syrian border town of Kobani continues, but the Islamic State seems to be getting a more decisive advantage by the moment, with Kurdish officials saying the town is now totally surrounded. In addition to the usual raids from the south and east, where the bulk of the Islamic State forces are located, smaller raids were reported from the west and perhaps more disturbingly, the north, where the Turkish border lies. Kurdish officials say that the Islamic State fighters attacked the border crossing with Turkey and that the Islamic State fighters were coming in from the Turkish side of the border. Turkey is denying that the Islamic State fighters were ever inside Turkey, but did confirm the border crossing was bombed. The incident fueled speculation among Kobani's Kurdish fighters that Turkey is cooperating with the Islamic State on the siege, which seems to be exactly what the Islamic State intended. At the same time, Kobani itself is a bit off the border, so it is possible that the Islamic State is sending forces up into the area around the border crossing to make it appear as if they're coming from Turkey or simply to block off reinforcements. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports an Egyptian court has dropped its case against former President Hosni Mubarak over the killing of protesters in the 2011 uprising that ended his 30-year rule and symbolized hope for a new era of political openness and accountability. Mubarak was sentenced to life in prison in 2012 for conspiring to murder 239 protesters, sowing chaos and creating a security vacuum during the 18-day revolt, but an appeals court ordered a retrial. His supporters erupted into celebration when the verdicts of the retrial, which also cleared Mubarak's former interior minister, Habib al-Adli, and six aides, were read out. Supporters outside the court far outnumbered families of protesters who died in the Tahrir Square revolt that had embodied hope of Arab Spring uprisings that spread through the region. The judge said criminal charges should never have been brought against Mubarak. The decision can be appealed, however, and the former leader was not freed as he is serving a three-year jail term in a separate embezzlement case. Many Egyptians who lived through Mubarak's rule view it as a period of autocracy and crony capitalism. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports if the United Nations fails to adopt a resolution affirming Palestinian statehood, the Palestinian Authority will reassess its security cooperation with Israel and seek membership in the International Criminal Court, according to President Mahmoud Abbas. Speaking to Arab League foreign ministers at a meeting in Cairo, Abbas also accused Israel of harboring an apartheid government instead of working to advance the peace process. Israel's Channel 10 quoted Abbas as saying, We will never recognize the Jewishness of the state of Israel, an apparent reference to Israel's proposed nationality law. During the meeting, Arab League foreign ministers agreed to present a draft resolution to the United Nations Security Council, setting a time frame for the creation of a Palestinian state state, but did not indicate when the resolution would be presented. Abbas told the gathering that Palestinians were unable to continue waiting while Israel creates facts on the ground through the continued building of settlements. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A mouse is eaten. It is an event that happens millions of times a day, all over the world. Other mice are wiped out by disease or starvation. If you collected all the mice that die in one day in New York City, they would weigh 8,000 pounds. If you stacked up an equivalent amount of dead humans or even mangy dogs, it would be considered an atrocity. It seems no one has any respect for the mouse. But then, why should they? The plankton of mammals. They breed rapidly, they all look identical, and they once spread the plague. No one weeps for the mouse, for its life is worth less than zero. Just another cold fact of life on this horrifying planet. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Sunday edition of the program. Of course, you can call in, bring up anything you want. We've been having a discussion about activism, some of which some activists find offensive. And the thing is, in my uh, observation, different people find different things offensive. And if uh, the activists here in Keene, Keene, New Hampshire, we've kind of put, in a lot of ways, Keene on the map for uh, being sort of this activist mecca, and that does mean some people come and go. 
Um, but, you know, because of that, uh, some people are, have been upset by some of the things that have happened here. And if we stopped doing all of the things that upset some people, then we wouldn't do anything. And so there's that. Dale is with us here from anarchyinyourhead.com, and uh, you've been sticking it out here. I appreciate you coming all the way out from uh, from Manchester to talk to a brick wall here. I know that's how <laughs> I'm glad fe- to be back. I know I that's am. how it feels to you, like you're <laughs> yes, talking to a brick does. wall and you're not being <laughs> listened to. But it's it's my experience that when people say you're not listening to me about this, it's that what they're really saying is is you're not doing what I want you to do because I'm listening. I've understood completely <laughs> what it was. I no, I get, I get understand. it. I get it. And uh, I and I get where you're coming mm-hmm. from. You know. Th- well, that- if you feel strongly about something, if you truly, truly feel like what you're doing is right, and you feel strongly about it, then no, you shouldn't let me talk you out of it. I right. agree. And I, I agree don't with think that. it's wrong to tell a government bureaucrat that when they no, hurt I, people, I, yeah. that it's wrong to hurt mm-hmm. people. Please mm-hmm. stop hurting people. Right. And I don't consider that harassing, but I understand why yeah. some people do. I, I'm going to talk about when we get a chance, and yep. I know there's someone on the hold. Uh, uh, yes. uh, when we get a chance, I do want to talk about why I think you're being douchey. Okay, fair enough. And let's, what I mean by douche. Let's go to Chris Cantwell, our Wednesday night co-host. He is on Skype. Hello, Chris. Good to be with you guys. Hey Thanks there. for having me on. Yes, sir. So I uh, I was just looking at uh, – there's a lot of question of what it is that we're accomplishing here, right, is what I keep on hearing getting asked and answered and then asked again. It seems to be what everybody wants to know. So I'm here looking at a list of um, the top 100 libertarian websites on planet Earth uh, by Alexa rank according to toplibertarian.com. And so three of those – are, to my understanding, run by Ian, lrn.fm, freetalklive.com, and freekeen.com. Another one is my own website, christophercantwell.com, which is seeing more traffic than the Free State Project is. And so we are getting these things in front of a great deal of people, and part of the reason that they're being put in front of a lot of people is thank you so much to people like Dale who are whining and crying about this stuff that it draws more attention to it, right? Um, we're reaching a great deal of people, which I'm pretty sure is like kind of the goal here, right? We want to get these ideas in front of people. We want to get people thinking, and it seems to be working out pretty well. And at least on my website, when I interact with my audience, what, what prevents them from moving here, if anything, is largely that they're sick and tired of listening to everybody complain and whine and judge everyone else's behavior. Can, oh, can well, I, 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 need, I deserve to respond to being, I, I I'm being called to, a whiner. I'd so. like to respond real quick, though. Yeah. Those people are just a bunch of uh, people with excuses, right? Like, oh, I'm not going to move to New Hampshire because some people are complaining. Well, they're the ones whining in that particular case. But go uh, ahead. And Dale. how many uh, man hours have I put into r- real activism doing in, in the, here in the real world? Uh, I've gone to jail for it. And, and when you call me a why, you call, why is it I'm a whiner when I call Ian out? If he calls someone out, he's being strong and expressing his opinion openly. I'm here. I drove out to Keene to spend uh, my time here on the air and own everything that I have to say. I have an opinion just like Ian does about what makes for effective activism. When I call him out for being a douche, and I do think he's being douchey, I like him. I like you too, by the way. Uh, I, I get along great with Chris in, in person. Uh, if I have an, exp- an opinion about a particular activism, it's not personal. I just want to be clear about that. And I like Ian. I like you. But if I have an opinion about your activism, if I think something you're doing is douchey, and I have the balls to come out here and own it and publicly own everything I say, why am I a whiner? How, how about if I call him a whiner when he follows the, uh, the meter maid around and complains about her writing tickets? I, I've, What's the I've difference? Called, I've called Ian a whiner more than once. The, the <laughs> whining is in the behavior, right? So if you're if you drive out to Keene and whine about people's activism, then you're whining, right? I mean that's just okay. What so it is, how is uh, so is when Ian yells at the parking meter maid? Is he calling her out for something he disagrees with, or is he whining? Well, and when the meter the maid is out threatening to steal people's cars, I think it's a little bit different, right? I mean, when we're, we're talking about dealing with aggressors, we're talking about dealing with initiators of force here. And so, yeah, I do think that there's a different standard that's applied, as Ian had said earlier. Yeah. Well, you're, you're just – that's just an issue of whether someone is justified in, the, in their – in their criticisms. Did Dale, uh, did you want to ask? It's, it's, that's cr- not the difference between whining and standing up to someone and expressing your opinion openly. D- I mean, Dale, did you want to ask Chris Cantwell about one of his blog posts right. that he made at so, StopFreeKeen.com? So uh, there's a Stop Free Keen page, which is obviously a spoof. It's it's not a secret. Not obvious to everyone. Well, but, okay, uh, a yes. few people may not know. I think it's, it's obvious. It's been discussed. It's fairly obvious. The site, unfortunately, is down at the moment. Though. Yeah, and that's why, I'm, unfortunately, I can't like pull out specific names. I know 
I think uh, who were some names? Who were some people that were called out in that blog? That- well, the the blog was essentially that Chris or the StopFreeKing.info site was identifying all these libertarians uh, across the, you know the country or wherever yeah, that uh, were complaining there a lot about of people. the Colbert Report. You could call them critique. whiners, or you can just say they're people who have an opinion about activism and whether it's actually effective, and. They're well-known, popular libertarians who have been around for a while and who have a lot of fans and are probably representative of a lot of opinions, a lot of opinions of a lot of libertarians. And what 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 I thought was kind of comical about that page was that it's being bragged about that all these people who are at least theoretically on our side, who are also libertarians, some of them would self-describe as anarchists or anti-statists, are uh, in strong disagreement and and blogging about it. And that's somehow something to, that, that that's uh, what does that prove? Like that you're more right because Why a lot of people good? disagree with you, uh, people who otherwise are on your side. It seems to me like all that shows is that you're being in, incredibly divisive, even amongst people who would otherwise be on your side. And that to me is 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 at least something to to pay attention to and not to be completely dismissive about. Well, if right? the, if the if the complaint is divisiveness here, then what I would say is that look, you know, th- this was in response to uh, us getting on the Colbert report. So for mm-hmm. one thing, I think, I've been saying it for long I, before I the think, Colbert report. I think the majority of this is has more to do with envy than anything else. Now, maybe that's not your case. <laughs> I, but am, I certainly, I certainly not envious of what I was the Colbert toward, report. Look, I want to be. Asso- I'm proud to be associated with the Free State Project, and I breathe a sigh of relief that they did not say Free State Project during that that report. <laughs> I, that was okay. not envy, trust me. Well, no, no, no. I didn't say that that was the case with you. I certainly think it's the case with Michael Dean and, and certainly others. Um, I don't think but, so. I don't yeah, think well, I, I do. justify that. Uh, back that up. Back that up. Well, Michael Dean basically has gone after myself and Larkin Rose and Stefan Molyneux on a pretty regular basis for the last several uh, months. I, and, I, pro- and, I have my beef with gets, the three of has, you. And he gets absolutely nothing drawn to him. He has, he has his dumb radio show is on one bird crap market and god knows where and i just chris you've been corrected chris, on that before chris. just to be clear let's let's be clear <laughs> michael dean's on i think 30 something uh, radio stations just yeah, his his show freedom well freedom and Kings, and and, like and by the way i even if there's if there's a let's say there's a product out there i may not be a big fan of the product i can still be a fan of the marketing campaign right and there's a lot of media out there that's very popular that i that i think is awful and i strongly disagree with just because you're you, you you can be um notorious and and get a lot of hits and that's and that's i get uh, kudos by the way because it's a good marketing campaign if you fire people up get them really upset and you you you're selling yourself i understand that you're a kind of you're you're a comedian you've got a product you get people fired up i'm sure it's very cathartic and it works well and it gets you a lot of hits but whether or not that serves an activism goal is a completely uh, separate subject. Well, how no, would Jezebel, a bunch of ta- Jezebel how, is, is infamous, right? I can't stand Jezebel, involved. but they get tons of hits. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're right. Let's get Chris a chance to respond. Go ahead, so, Chris. So, no, it is it is an activist goal, right? Because the idea if, – if, if the goal of your activism is something other than, than getting this in front of people, then I'm not entirely sure what it is. And additionally to that, not only are we getting these ideas in front of more people than anybody else really – um, we're, we've also costed the city upwards of eighty thousand dollars. We got one of these people to quit their job and say that it was worse being a keen parking enforcer than it was to be a combat veteran in Iraq. Okay, it's it's a situation that we're making it an unpleasurable situation to be a government agent. We're getting it in front of more eyeballs than damn near anybody else. And there's there are good things being done here. So if you don't like it, then don't like it. That's yeah. fine. We'll make fun of you for not liking Why it. Why should okay we with you care? making fun of me? I got a thick skin. Uh, uh, D- Dale, you're bringing up all these uh, noteworthy libertarians. I really am not concerned with what their opinion is. Or mine either, apparently. Because to me, <laughs> we've to only me, been friends for seven years and done years and years opinion, of activism together. Your opinion together. <laughs> matters a lot more than somebody who just yaks on the internet apparently and writes, not. writes scholarly journals. For me, those aren't the kind of people I'm trying to attract here. Chris, if you want to hang on, we'll bring it back. There's more coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keepstock Solutions help us manage our facilities inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash keepstock for more information. Granger for the ones who get it done. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. Plenty of time for your call with your thoughts. If you dial in now, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, and by the way, if you are calling on Skype and we already have somebody on the line from Skype, I can't take your call. So just be patient. We'll uh, see if we can make room for you here in a little bit because we do have someone on the line right now on Skype. If you have Bitcoin and you need a car, check out NewAgeAutoSales.com. They've got late model used cars that they've cared for from their rental fleet. And since New Age Auto Sales is selling their own well-maintained cars, you don't have to pay for the auction fees and the transport costs that go into most used cars. They, they're not getting passed on to you. Their cars are in great condition and they're priced to move. They can ship anywhere in the world. So go to NewAgeAutoSales.com and see what they have. They're looking to be the Bitcoin auto dealership. With Bitcoin, your money never needs to be exchanged into dollars. It's NewAgeAutoSales.com for late model, well-maintained cars shipped anywhere in the world for Bitcoin. 
Many people in the Bitcoin community have said they want to be able to buy a car with Bitcoin. Now's your chance. Head on over to the website, give them a call, and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, NewAgeAutoSales.com. We've been discussing some of the controversial activism that has gone on here in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, Christopher Cantwell is on the line with us here. We're going to bring him back. Dale Everett joining us in the studio. Me and Mark here as, as normal on Sunday nights. But, Dale, it's nice to have you uh, in here. Good to have you back for even if just it's uh, one night. Would, of course, love to invite you back in the future. But Chris Cantwell uh, is on the line with us here. And, uh, Dale, you had brought up a, a blog that Chris had written over at StopFreeKeene.info. It's kind of a, a parody site. And uh, the blog sort of outlines these noteworthy name libertarians who have uh, been critical of some of the activism, specifically the Robin Hooding and the Colbert Report. Colbert Report did a uh, report about the Robin Hooders, which is a group of activists who fill meters in front of parking enforcers, thereby stopping the parking enforcers from mm-hmm. uh, from writing tickets. Which I've done myself. And mm-hmm. the uh, the report was, you know, quite the uh, funny. I thought it was funny. I really enjoyed. Enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed. I, I, yeah, I enjoyed I, making it. Okay, and yeah. it was a very. It was obviously not friendly uh, towards no, us, and that's and that's what we expected. And well, so the a thing lot of he, the things that what gets me though the point that I think the point to make here is that he was making fun of you for things that I have said that I have mm-hmm. been critical of in the past as well. So and, so it's not just that you were the butt of a joke. Uh, it was that he, you know it just sort of came to fruition stuff that I've been talking about for a while. So um, some people, you know, for, for a lot of people, that and might have been their people. first time seeing it, though. I mean, you, yeah. you're well aware of what goes on here in Keene, but a lot of libertarians seeing that was maybe their first experience with what's been going on here in Keene, and uh, and they got upset about it. Chris Cantwell, uh, you, you know, you sort of wore that as a badge of honor. Uh, and what is your response to that? I mean, shouldn't we be concerned, Chris, that these noteworthy libertarians are upset at what's going on here? Well, if, first of all, I don't think most of the people who are complaining were all that noteworthy. I mean, I, I started off with Jack Hunter, the Southern Avenger, who you know has a little bit of a reputation for his work in electoral politics. He was working for the for the Rand Paul administration, who I think you know maybe went up and drew some sanctions against Iran after he was done, because that's better for liberty than uh, chasing meter maids around. Apparently. Well, you all, you wrote that article r- pretty soon after the Colbert Report well, hit. Since that article's right. come out, Larkin Rose, uh, Robert Murray. Murphy. So, you know, there yeah, are Robert some, Murphy came to mind. I, there are yeah. some of these folks who are relatively well known in the libertarian community. And, and their opinions are generally pretty respected. But, you and know, without without taking a it's, shot, it's not so much that, uh, that it's not it's not so much that um, we should be concerned that they're upset or not. It's the 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 almost knee jerk dismissiveness of it just for disagreeing, the complete disregard for someone uh, expressing what would otherwise could be. Um, received as constructive criticism if it wasn't so immediately dismissed, uh, if there wasn't such a, such a dismissive attitude of it. And that's what I think is douchey, is that sort of condescension. That's culty is what that is. If that, it's, I, haven't it's read, culty, yeah. I haven't read the article, but that's what a cult leader would, type person would do. That you disagree, I, so I don't care about what your opinion is. And and it's just it's that open dismissiveness that to me is very condescending. The acting like you know all the answers and anyone who disagrees with you is wrong. It doesn't matter how well, widespread well, that opinion becomes or what people have to say to back it up. It's you're religiously married to this to these ideas. Well, no, I'm not not religiously married to anything. I'm looking at the data, right? And this is the whole point. This is what I said to Larkin Rose that you know uh, the 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 fact of the matter is. Every piece of available data disagrees with this assumption that this is so bad, right? No, no, I think no. Your data the, the, is that you're the, getting a lot of hits. If you well, nail, if you nail your testicles to a board <laughs> on on a video, uh, on, presumably on a website that doesn't censor it too much, then you're probably going to get a lot of hits. You can if you act like if you do outrageous things, whether there's any right correctness to it or or any sense to it at all, you'll probably get a lot of hits. That is not necessarily uh, evidence that you're correct. Well, it, it, cor- correct is it, there's no there's no right or wrong here, right? You you said earlier it's, it's that you subjective. understand that these I admit people that. are sort of held to a different standard because they're aggressors, right? So like the the question is in in my mind, if I'm trying to get people on board with an idea, I need to get them if to to change hearts and minds, I first need ears and eyeballs. Okay, sure. And, and there's there's there is no two ways about that. And and the fact of the matter is is that we, you know me and Ian are. are uh, what we're doing out here, what a lot of us are doing out here, some of the more shocking things are the more popular things that are going on out there. And this is getting in front of more people than 
other yeah. things. You're, you're calling it popular. I'm a, saying you're getting a lot a of hits. It's a piece of data you're, that is sure. you know, kind of hard to ignore, and it's hard for me to ignore the fact that most of the people who are complaining about it aren't seeing the same number of eyeballs. There, uh, that, if you again, if you do, if you nail your testicles to a wooden board, you're going to get hits. You, if you do outrageous things, yes, you'll get you'll get if eyeballs. You nail your the Free State to Project has board. gotten a lot of uh, attention ramped up over the years without doing outrageous things necessarily. They're not taking the this State sort Pro- of <laughs> hold on. The Free run naked State down the street with peanut the butter bu- on. The and- bulk of their press <laughs> that they've received, a lot of their press, has come from the activism going on here in Keene. And the, exactly. the news. The Free and- State Project Inc. does nothing. Okay, they do. Porkfest and Liberty Forum, period. And everything else is just the Free State Project they also, Inc. They also, taking credit for what they want to take credit for. There are a lot of activists out there winning elections. They don't want to take credit for. And articles getting written about that. That's There's not, other they, things Those articles are, are not getting written anywhere outside of New Hampshire. Look, uh, the, the there was a recent Telegraph article that came out of uh, Keene. The guy had come to Keene to report on uh, the Robin Hooding thing. And then he did an article about the Free State Project. After that, where did he come to report on the Free State Project? He came to Keene. Uh, the, the the terrible New York Times article that came out earlier this year that, again, a lot of people were... Ooh, oh, there was a recent, a, there was a recent article out. about the, the elections being won in, in, in reason, New Hampshire. Okay. I don't know we're, if anyone I thought came we were talking about, about media outside of the libertarian movement. I'm talking about main, mainstream media hits. We well, you said you want to attract Keene. more libertarians here. If Reason Magazine is a really good source to do that. I'm not worried about Reason Magazine. They cover what goes on here in Right, because you can't take credit for that with your outrageous Oh, no, activism. I take credit for it. They've <laughs> Absolutely covered keen activism in Reason Magazine multiple times. Not that times. article. That article wasn't about you. You are not the. You are. I'm not, not taking credit for all of it, Dale. But I'm pointing out that there, there was You've a New York Times article where people were, "Oh my God, it's terrible." Well, guess what? That spawned at least five to seven other articles that came out of it that were very good. Can we reiterate again too that I have been involved in free keen activism myself, and I've done lots. There's been. I, I said at the beginning of the show. 80, 90% of it, I have no beef about it all. Mm-hmm. If I have an opinion about yeah. 10 or 20% about it, and a lot of other libertarians agree with me, I think it's worth a little bit less condescension. Argumentum us. ad populum. Not if you're trying to make a popular statement. He's saying a lot of other libertarians agree. I'm saying I don't care what they think. 855 450 free. More coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. I'm going to do what I think is right. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. For all our loyal listeners, it's time for another giveaway. Over the next 30 days, our friends at SupernaturalSilver.com are giving away six 16-ounce Supernatural Silver liquid valued at nearly $100 per bottle or their skin and body gel priced at $49.98. All you have to do is enter and win at GCNlive.com. Hurry, contest ends December 5th. GCN can give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with the Supernatural Silver giveaway at GCNlive.com. Never, ever send a follow-up email asking, Did you get my email? Email 101, if it didn't bounce back undeliverable, it got where you sent it. And avoid transmedia pestering, like calling to ask, Did you get my email? Or emailing to say, I left you a voicemail. If your emails and voicemails aren't being acknowledged, your problem isn't technology, it's technique. Is your message concise and understandable? Have you boiled it down to seem as relevant as possible to the recipient? In other words, is it the opposite of spam or junk mail? All of this really matters if you're a job seeker. But even if you're not, with money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at Twitter.LRN.FM. That's Twitter.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Uh, the features on the site we give away. You can actually vote on stuff there. It's a Reddit-based front page. You can submit content, stuff that you think is interesting, you might want us to talk about on the radio waves. Go to freetalklive.com. You can vote the stuff up you like, vote down what you don't like. It's all free. If you're thinking about starting a business, here's a word to the wise. Incorporate your business at LegalZoom.com. Incorporation can help protect you against frivolous lawsuits that can wipe you out. And at LegalZoom.com, it's fast, easy, and inexpensive. They do all kinds of legal documents there. I'm looking at a page of dozens of legal documents that they uh, provide for you at LegalZoom.com, including wills, trademarks, LLCs, whatever you need. They've got it at LegalZoom.com. They've got it significantly less expensive, and it's not complicated. They ask you some questions. They fill out the forms. They're not attorneys, but they were started by an attorney. Use coupon code FTL. You save 10 bucks on your order. LegalZoom.com. It's LegalZoom.com. All right. So yeah, I, th just to recap real briefly, we've been talking about activism. Uh, Chris Cantwell was on the line. He's gone now. You can go to ChristopherCantwell.com to check out more of his stuff. But uh, we've got Dale Everett in the studio here, Ian and Mark, as normal. We've been discussing activism, different approaches. Some of the activism that's happened here in Keene, New Hampshire, which you can see over at freekeen.com, has been offensive. Some people call it douchey or being a-holes or whatever. You're harassing the government employees, and it makes some liberty folks like you, Dale, uncomfortable. Uh, you don't like to watch these you know, these videos. You have called it douchey. Uh, that's a word that, that you've used here tonight. And you feel as though that uh, people who have your viewpoint, who who I you know respect as an individual, are being dismissed. You feel like you're not being heard. You're feeling it was called culty, Mark, I, by you uh, to well, you know to dismiss uh, these opinions. I, I think I think that it represents an incredibly condescending attitude toward pe toward people who disagree with you. And you can go any all the way. All the people who disagree with you, there's there are the people who disagree with you a lot, mm -hmm. like the meter maids. Okay. For instance, or anyone who supports the meaner maids who provides moral support for them doing that and all the other government bureaucrats, all those people who think that they that those things are justified and necessary. Um, you obviously disagree with them strongly. That's fine. Uh, we can disagree with each other, even on these sorts of things. But there's a there's, it's the condescending attitude toward all those people who disagree with us that I think is what makes someone douchey. That's a kind of. Uh, you know, this sort of sense that you know exactly what's right and it, it, anyone who disagrees with you is uh, th that condescension toward them. Let me read these statements 
that we've okay. I've had him on my screen for the whole show um, on on a Facebook conversation about the subject. You said, "LOL, what a pathetic movement!" If one video is the talk of the community, seriously, libertarians are a effing joke, and their reactions to this prove it. What a bunch of whiny pansies! If they can't even take a joke, what makes them think they can go up against the state? Uh, the state is in quotes. Um, uh, just a bunch of intellectual wussies hiding behind their keyboards. Keen activists have more bravado in their pinky fingers than the rest of these folks. Collectively, libertarians are a effing joke. That's the, your allies that you're talking about. You, you know, that that libertarians I, are a joke. It, it's, it, <laughs> I mean, collectively, they're a joke. I'm not saying individually you're well, a joke. Well, because we don't have numbers. I, I, well, I okay. Mean, and, know, and, the, and their activism is, is not impactful. Because they don't have numbers, and the activism that we're doing here in Keene is impactful. We're making uh, we're making an impact. You can see that by the fact that we're on the Colbert Report and Good Morning America and Fox News and I, MSNBC. I I, and I, all I kinds wanted of attention. I, I don't, and that we're the talk of the libertarian community as well, which is why I was saying it was pathetic. Because so is one Westboro video, Baptist Church. One you video. Know how much, you know how much attention they get. Do you know how much coverage they get? Do you know how many hits their website gets? It's a ton. How does that mean anything? How is that a criteria of judging the effectiveness of your activism? If That's, you can be you're not letting universally me hated. You're going off in a different direction. I'd like to respond to the statements. You wanted me to read you wanted okay. to read those statements and I'm yeah, responding to them. What was I saying when I was saying that? The libertarian community as a whole, nationwide, is pathetic. And the fact that us little activists in Keen, you know, make what there's one video on the Colbert Report that somebody doesn't like. They don't like they can't take a joke and they flip out saying this is the end of the liberty movement that, oh, my God, they're ruining it for the rest of us. The same old crap that I've heard a, a zillion times. You're ruining it for the rest of us. You people are out in Keene. It's 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 my point is that there's nothing else going on in the liberty movement that's making headlines like this. There's nothing else happening out there. That's not to say there aren't things happening that's not to say there isn't activism certainly people all around the country are doing different types of activism and you know every now and then they'll make the local news uh with oh well look these people are out cop blocking or whatever and that's great but nobody's making the national level splash that the activists in Keene are making and it's a shame it's an indictment on the entire movement that we can do it here but nobody else can do it anywhere else that's what i was pointing out there uh, it's people pathetic. are doing <laughs> You're, the thing and is, I agree with Cantwell. There's uh, envy involved too. In well, the there's there's a lot of good. Like I said, there's a lot of good things that have come out of Free Keen and the rest of the Free State Project. I think there's a lot of people I don't think are getting proper credit for uh, the progress that the Free State Project has made. And what? Well, I just want to make a, a point here. So when you talk about envy, I, I have a difficult time when you just sort of speculate that somebody's envious because when I watch this video. Uh, this video of the it's called the Free Keen Squad by the mm -hmm. Colbert Report. We posted at Free Keen uh, at Facebook.freetalklive.com. I didn't feel I'm envious of Ian and his crew getting made to look like a bunch of effing clowns on net, on one of the most popular uh, uh, shows on in America, and uh, consequently uh, mm -hmm. besmirching me and my friends and my radio program and some things yeah. I believe strongly. Envy was not the feeling that no. I felt. Like I and so Relief, people would agree with me. But I wasn't me, one of yeah. those people in that video. <laughs> I'm not saying that it was a primary <laughs> motivator. Uh, so I don't know. So you, like it's it's just a, it, it's this tossing out of a. Yeah, uh, another point though that I was making is that. Uh, uh, these libertarians like you, Mark, you got all hurt about that. And it just shows you can't take a joke. Uh, libertarians, you're going to get made fun of as soon as you start to uh, get popular, as soon as you start to make I an make impact. A living you're going to get made fun of. Making fun of get used to stupid it. socialist I statist. I don't not because I respect them and not because I believe that they're of any value. I think that quite the opposite. They are deserving of disrespect and they mm. have no value. They are violent thugs. Mm. And that's why I make fun of them because making fun of them is a good thing. It, this evening, you you have both said it's a good idea to make fun of status, yes. and it's a good no, no, idea no, to get status. made fun of no, yourself. No, wait a second. You, <laughs> I said a, the wait state. a second. It's a good idea to make fun of the state, and it's a good idea to get made fun of yourself. What kind of moron are you with making these statements? Either it's, it's a value Brother, to make I fun got of somebody, times the traffic, or it's man. not. Uh, thank ten you. Ten times the traffic like, the Westboro next Baptist day. Church has traffic. It traffic was great. is yeah. not of a, a value I, unless you can use sure it. Sure it is. If I said 80 to 90% of the activism you do, I think is awesome. 
How do you know that that's not the stuff that's that's being make, drawing people and getting and really successful? I know. I mean, that, yeah, and uh, ten, that ten per twenty twenty percent might be bumping up your numbers a lot because people mm-hmm. are so furious. I, there's a website called Jezebel. I read their articles all the time because they say the most ridiculous, stupid things, mm-hmm. and uh, and it gets a lot of hits, mostly because they fire people up by making outrageous claims. It's not because everyone agrees with them. It's because people are going there to argue with them and to tell them how stupid they are. Mm-hmm. And a Westboro Baptist Church is immensely popular and gets lots right. of press coverage. This is the definition of they're, a troll. They're horrible. You are saying that being a troll is effective activism. It's fun to troll the liberty community. They can't take a joke. That's not effective <laughs> activism. Call it I didn't trolling, say it was not activism. I didn't say trolling the activism it's jack community activism. was activism. Yeah. The, the, the new term is jackassivism. We didn't do the jackass we got a lot of on. hits. We didn't do the <laughs> we me. didn't do the Colbert <laughs> report to troll the libertarians, but it turned into a troll of the libertarians because they acted all they freaked out about it. A bunch of them did, not all of them, because some of them appreciated the uh, the comedy and they can take a joke. Uh, they have no intention of moving can't. either. They many think you can't. look silly from afar. I don't care what they think. I know. They can think I That's look silly. That's the problem. I I'm care not afraid what they to look think. silly. Mark, I'm not afraid to look silly. You are. You're the one who's upset about it. No, we I'm, went I'm out a... there. They gave us silly bow and arrows and things yes. like that. There were silly props. If you've that seen this. That was not I don't what care about the that. worst of it. I don't by care about means. that. But, that's beca- <laughs> but we, we went into it knowing we would be made fun of. We went into it knowing we would be lampooned. We knew we were going to be skewered. Uh, in that whole process, but we also knew that millions it's not, of people you were going to see it. It's not about that video. That video was just what brought more attention to it. Like I said over and over, I've been talking about this since before the video. I've, I, you can do most of this but stuff. You know what the difference this is? Act, your activism could be better if you were just receptive to constructive criticism from people who oh, you I'm claim to receptive. respect. I'm just, I've heard this one a million times, and I rejected it years ago. So I'm continuing to reject it. What you're it, saying is, is be respective of respectful towards these aggressive state agents who are ruining people's lives. And I'm not going to bow, no, and not I'm not saying, going to cower. That's not what I'm, I'm not saying. saying I'm saying pick your battles. Don't pick this one and don't, uh, you know, talk back to the parking enforcers. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have border patrols. You want to have checkpoints. You want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was about. You're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Great, you are aware of it. Let them come in legally. 
legal. Well, okay, come on, the legally, Lou. The legal is such a cop out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Although the uh, remaining moments here are going to be loaded up with your calls. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. Join Dale over on his website, anarchyinyourhead.com. You know, Dale, I think you should change the name of your website because the uh, word anarchy is offensive to people and you need to pick your battles. Yeah, it's another straw man. That's great. Well, <laughs> what you said here a moment ago was that I needed to pick my battles. We're t- yeah. cr- you're critiquing yeah. some of the activism That's happening That's a subjective here judgment, Keen. but I, and, I, and yeah. I've, ex- I've simply tried to express constructive criticism about like 10% of the activism of Free Keen. I don't but see I'm myself being as put battling. On, I'm being put on, if you either agree with me 100% yeah. or I don't give a crap what you have to say. No, that's not true. It's uh, a cult. That's ridiculous. Uh, I think no, it's a cult. There's now. no charismatic leader. There's no. Uh, that's a, that's not what's a cult. true. There's you, no people. There may be a leader, have, but he's not you charismatic. You are inspiring people to come and do outrageous things, sometimes highly risky types of activism, with very questionable return on value for that sorts of those sorts of sacrifices. They get used up. They leave, or they stop doing activism. Uh, they're they're hardcore on board for a while. I was, and uh, you know, you get really excited about it. Mm. Um, but it's based on sort of religious concepts that if I. I think it's left over. A lot of this, I think, is left over from uh, that whole the secret and uh, the law of attraction, which is magical thinking. And that magical thinking is if I just live my life as a free person, it doesn't matter, uh, then the world is going to somehow reflectively change um, in some kind of magical way. And, and I think activism takes thoughtfulness and looking back on our on the things we've done and trying to evaluate mm-hmm. what was effective, what was not effective, you know, here's what how things I can we do better, effective. you know? Let me, and, let me tell you how I evaluate what's effective. that's not happening. It's, it's, here's, uh, here's how I evaluate what's effective is the feedback that I get. Okay. And I realize that you're giving me feedback saying that this is terrible. You guys are doing terrible activism in this 10% of the Which time. Which you're taking as this positive doesn't... feedback. No, 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 no. People no, disagree no, no. with me, so no, I must no. be right. What you're ignoring is the feedback you don't, uh, the, the feedback you're not privy to, right? So the feedback you're not privy to is all the people who have told us, keep it up, guys. You're doing amazing work. And I mean mm. people who live in this area here in Keene, New Hampshire, the people who have said thank you. For doing this, who have given Robin Hooders hugs on the streets, who have handed over donations. Who can, have I, come- can I ask something about that, though? Can you what? Can I ask something about that? Please. How much of that has been since the Colbert video, for Const- instance? It's constant. Uh, because constant. I know I, I know a oh, lot of people, the their video? experience with Robin Hood, there, there's only been a few videos, for instance. There's a lot mm-hmm. of Robin Hood videos uh, that aren't that uh, shocking or People aren't being it's that yeah. douchey in them. Yeah. And and there's plenty of people getting notes on their windshield. Like, I left these notes saying, mm-hmm. hey, I put some money in your meter and, and hopefully saved you from getting a ticket. Uh, this is Robin Hood. And uh, if you want— People you, will you wear can, well, well aware and, and, and of Robin Hood. And I expect those people to have a positive Hold response. On. People will, were well aware of Robin Hooding before Stephen Colbert here in Keene, yeah. New Hampshire. And okay? most of them, it's because the they had the a, a, a sticker on their window, and most of them They've probably also, did not see those outrageous videos. You are videos. incorrect. They, uh, the the, uh, the Keene Robin Hooders have been the talk of the town. It was the news story of the year in 2013. 
all people who are connected in any way, shape, or form to the news in Keene have heard the allegations about their harassing, their threatening. It's a Supreme their, Court case. And they're intimidating. They've all heard those allegations. But yet the Robin Hooders have been on the streets this whole time, and I've been out collecting petition signatures from hundreds of people, and I, and people would ask me, hey, are you one of the Robin Hooders? And sometimes I'm like, oh, crap, are they going to deck me? You know, right? Like, mm-hmm. what's what are they going to do? Because some, the, some of these people are psychopaths. Uh, but, you know. Almost every I, time, it's positive comments. It's people giving us positive feedback, saying thank you. You know why? Because people don't like the parking enforcers. I don't either. And they don't like. I don't like the parking tickets. enforcers. So but I don't. I think you're the, saying pick I, your I still, battles. I don't. I would. I don't feel. I wouldn't feel justified in just following someone around and just shouting. Uh, That's not what I do. At them. <laughs> That's not what anyone does, Dale. Just because they show it for four, you know, ten seconds. I just on watched a the Colbert video. Report. That's what you were doing. I watched it with my own eyes. Your video. And yeah, I know you. that woman. I hear yeah. that woman is a horrible woman, and she's and she lies sometimes. I've never been anything like but nice to okay. that lady. Uh, I don't understand it, how that. I'm well, always I, that nice doesn't mean to, I want to be a, 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 a yeah, douche. I gotcha. I'm always <laughs> nice to that lady. But she was being crazy, and I started recording that situation, and I laughed at her for being People, crazy. People, go watch it yourselves. If yeah. you're listening, it's on the Facebook. Dana, describing it to you. I just watched Dana's it. Dana's in Grand Rapids. Uh, you're on she's Free Talk Live. She's running from Ian. Hello, Dana. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, I called, um, I've talked to Ian and um, Mark uh, several times. I'm not a regular caller, but I've called many times. Um, I talked to you guys before Dale was on. Was that Dale that read that nasty letter from someone, um, you, you know, that the libertarians are over and this and that? Was that Dale that read that letter? Uh, I think you were talking about the the quotes that he was reading that I made on Facebook. Yeah, yeah I, I about read something that Ian said being a joke collectively. Oh, 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 okay. Well, I thought that I misunderstood. Then I apologize. I thought someone wrote that in. I talked to Ian and Mark on a Saturday night uh, back in August, and I warned you guys. I said there's a lot of conservatives who are conservative slash libertarians. And uh, between the Democrats and the Republicans, you have uh, the Republican Party has lost more um, of its members claim they're independent or libertarians and or libertarian than the Democrats. And I warned you guys, and I want to tell all three of you, I'm not going to pick sides in the thing tonight. There is enough time. But I warned you guys, be on the lookout because a lot of uh, people who Colbert and um, Stewart attract – they're the so-called, I use that in quotes, open-minded liberals who think that's really news that these guys are putting out. But they're going to come after you guys because you're attracting conservatives, you're attracting Republicans, and uh, you are bleeding a little bit off the Democratic Party. So those Democrats are going to come after you guys full force. You know how dirty they are. You know how nasty they are. Thanks for the call tonight, Dana. I appreciate hearing from you. The uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I think what she's saying is I don't agree that uh, libertarians attract Republicans over liberals. I think that libertarian-minded folks attract people from all across the political spectrum. But, you know, I can understand where she's coming from. It's certainly true that if you put it out there, whatever it is you're doing, some people are going to attack you for it. That's true. When I took a train trip to Washington, I ended up getting uh, set next to one of the senator's uh, high-level aides. And I had a long conversation with this guy, and what he said was that essentially the biggest fear he has from a political standpoint is libertarianism on the rise in the United States. Pat's in Norfolk. You're on Free Talk Live. Pat, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, uh, how you guys doing? Good, Pat. Go ahead. You've got to get on uh, real quick here. Go ahead. I want to talk about that uh, we're at the end of hurricane season. Uh I was, I was trying to figure out what, what was the ever the largest one recorded on, on the East Coast. I have no idea. I would ask I would ask Google or Wikipedia that particular question. I mean, we're just talk show hosts. We don't actually know anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know there's a lot of them, so, you know. Yeah, there are. Thanks for the call, Pat. Uh, let's continue here. We've got on Skype, we got James in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. And James, are you there? James going like yeah, speaking of making, yeah, but, speaking of making an impact in activism, the parking meters are still there on Keene, aren't they, Minister? But the Colbert report hit, hit the Three Geek Squad nail right on their so-called free Keene activist tools butt heads. Just as it's so funny for me to hear your Minister Edge that, Mark, you feel violated that Folk News, uh, Comedy Central made fun of the 
the film strip clubbers taking their own clips and making fun of them. I'm sure. Speaking of Cantwell, by the way, and at arguments ad populum, minister, uh, CC your so-called brutalist neighbor was making. Uh, well, he was literally uh, taking, uh, making, bragging about people and their eyeballs coming to his website. Mm -hmm. But there, you got sixteen hundred people in a population of a million and a half that are so-called free staters. So you're off by a factor of about a. A thousand. What's your point? You'll ever make an impact in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Thanks for the call tonight. We're making a fine impact. The Free State Project does have over 1,600 people here, and whether or not you like all of the activism that's happening here, it is the best, most exciting activism movement across the board. It generates more press in in New Hampshire. The activism movement here, and I mean all of it, shire sharing, all the stuff that happens here, generates more press collectively than I think the entire liberty movement has had happen anywhere else. That's because the activists here are having an impact, whether it's the activists in Keene doing what we're doing, or whether it's people in Concord, uh, you know, doing legislative style things. People are getting elected here. That ha actually happens. Libertarians, even anarchists getting elected in New Hampshire. Where yeah. else is that happening? Nowhere else. Let's please give those folks some credit, even though they're not running down the street naked with peanut butter on them. I give those people credit <laughs> all the time, Dale. I mean, we constantly right. are talking about all of the awesome things happening here. I was one of the co-producers of the new 101 Reasons film that goes mm -hmm. over all kinds of different things that are happening here in New Hampshire. Sure. Okay. So it's not like that right. those people don't get credit. It's just that the people who are butt hurt, like Mark Edge and all these others, I don't over know some why you use this term butt hurt. Well, yeah, again, like I like uh, Chris Cantwell is calling me a whiner for expressing my opinion. When you express it, you're like this bold activist who who has the the guts to stand up to the oppressors. And you know, I express my opinion. I'm being butt hurt and whiny as a, uh, in opposition to that. <laughs> We're out of time for tonight, but you can join us again tomorrow night online at freetalklive.com or maybe on your local radio station. If we're not on your local station, you can call him and ask real nicely for some more Free Talk Live. Check out Dale on his website, anarchyinyourhead.com. You can go there and read his article about douchebaggery. And this <laughs> has been Free Talk Live. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, November 30th, 2014. Silver is trading at $15.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,167 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $380. 
Antiwar.com reports months of fighting over the key North Syrian border town of Kobani continues, but the Islamic State seems to be getting a more decisive advantage by the moment, with Kurdish officials saying the town is now totally surrounded. In addition to the usual raids from the south and east, where the bulk of the Islamic State forces are located, smaller raids were reported from the west and perhaps more disturbingly, the north, where the Turkish border lies. Kurdish officials say that the Islamic State fighters attacked the border crossing with Turkey and that the Islamic State fighters were coming in from the Turkish side of the border. Turkey is denying that the Islamic State fighters were ever inside Turkey, but did confirm the border crossing was bombed. The incident fueled speculation among Kobani's Kurdish fighters that Turkey is cooperating with the Islamic State on the siege, which seems to be exactly what the Islamic State intended. At the same time, Kobani itself is a bit off the border, so it is possible that the Islamic State is sending forces up into the area around the border crossing to make it appear as if they're coming from Turkey or simply to block off reinforcements. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports an Egyptian court has dropped its case against former President Hosni Mubarak over the killing of protesters in the 2011 uprising that ended his 30-year rule and symbolized hope for a new era of political openness and accountability. Mubarak was sentenced to life in prison in 2012 for conspiring to murder 239 protesters, sowing chaos and creating a security vacuum during the 18-day revolt, but an appeals court ordered a retrial. His supporters erupted into celebration when the verdicts of the retrial, which also cleared Mubarak's former interior minister, Habib al-Adli, and six aides were read out. Supporters outside the court far outnumbered families of protesters who died in the Tahrir Square revolt that had embodied hope of Arab Spring uprisings that spread through the region. The judge said criminal charges should never have been brought against Mubarak. The decision can be appealed, however, and the former leader was not freed as he is serving a three-year jail term in a separate embezzlement case. Many Egyptians who lived through Mubarak's rule view it as a period of autocracy and crony capitalism. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports if the United Nations fails to adopt a resolution affirming Palestinian statehood, the Palestinian Authority will reassess its security cooperation with Israel and seek membership in the International Criminal Court, according to President Mahmoud Abbas. Speaking to Arab League foreign ministers at a meeting in Cairo, Abbas also accused Israel of harboring an apartheid government instead of working to advance the peace process. Israel's Channel 10 quoted Abbas as 